hallelujah that's a very powerful message to this satanic world that has no regard for God when you have Jesus you have everything turn it into a prayer and say Lord teach me the excellency of placing value on you the excellency of placing value on you the excellency of placing value anything minus Jesus is death anything minus Jesus will eventually prove to be useless let it be a revelation in our hearts forever forever hallelujah praise the lord now pray one last prayer father give me an encounter tonight in the name of jesus everywhere inside outside give me an encounter tonight in the name of jesus We're here for an encounter. Give me an encounter. Give me an encounter in the name of Jesus. Let the weight of your glory fall. Let it cover all the earth. Let the weight of your glory fall. It's a powerful prayer. Let it cover all the earth. Let the weight of your glory fall. Let it cover all the earth. 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 Let it cover our lives, O oh God. Let it cover all the earth. Adonai, Lamb of God, you are worthy, worthy of my prayer. King of kings, you're the Lord of lords. Let your kingdom reign in us. Adonai. It's our prayer tonight and forever. Adonai. Let your kingdom come Remains our prayer Let your kingdom come yeah. Let your kingdom reign Let your kingdom reign
Let it rain Let it rain Would you open the floodgates of heaven? Let it rain. 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 Open the floodgates of heaven. God bless you. We thank the Lord for the opportunity that he provides for us week after week to learn. Um, let me speak especially for those of us who are here. Be very careful so that we never get to points where we become too familiar with the dealings of God. You know, sometimes the Bible says knowledge can puff up. That means that when you get to a point where truly in experience, you understand the ways of God, chances are that you can plateau at a dimension in the spirit and believe that that is all there is in the pursuit and the knowledge of God. And it's not, it's not a state that may be done intentionally usually the bible calls it the pride of life the pride of life is different from pride the pride of life is the self-glorification that comes in the face of obvious results if you don't have results you cannot have the pride of life you can have pride but not the pride of life and i know that god has helped us and we have to be very careful so that we are not lost in the folly of achievements achievements are important but they can be very destructive very destructive hallelujah and so it's important that our hearts continue to remain malleable and open and the lord will help us in jesus name amen and amen I want to teach on something very powerful i i believe with all my heart um, if we're not able to finish it tonight we can continue um perhaps after the miracle service but um you know we've been discussing along the lines of our convictions about god and the methodology please i want you to listen very carefully there is a formula for knowing god that means that the pathway to the knowledge of god is not one that is dependent on creativity i've taught you and it will i will continue to repeat it again and again that when it has to do with your walking with god creativity is not required what is required is obedience and alignment you are not at liberty to choose your pathway you are not at liberty to choose your formula it is not given to a man to choose how he wants to know god that privilege was never given to the saints at no time was any man given the privilege to invent his way of knowing god are we together creativity only becomes useful 
when that kingly dimension when it has to do with the revelation to creation now to creation that's where creativity comes as one of the doorways to manifesting dominion but as far as our work with god and our spiritual growth is concerned we are not given the liberty to choose the pathway the bible says ask for the ancient path and when you find it walk in it that means that your creativity is not required i say this because the man please listen man is like is like a raw material are we together and there is a process that god leads man through and the object what man should become is already known in the heart of the father are we together and the bible does not even hide it he already tells us who and what we should be like that means at the end of our journey we should become like an embodiment that is personified in jesus the christ are we together now so you pass a product from one end of the the machine or whatever it is and then you already have an expectation that if done well this is what should happen when a caterer or a chef gets to the kitchen to cook he or she already has an idea are we together of what the meal should become there is nobody who cooks properly and then does not have an idea and in many regards a clear picture of what the meal should become you don't have to wait for the food to cook to know what it should be from the start you already know are we together now many people can be with you in the kitchen there and not exactly know what because of the kind of combination but at the end you must know what you should be when a pilot is about to fly an airplane from one place to another the pilot although the pilot may not see where he's going most of the time the pilot already knows that i'm flying from lagos to abuja i'm flying from lagos to kaduna and so on and so forth it is not only god that wants to that should know what we should be even the be should have an idea of what he should become transformation is almost impossible when there is no reference you cannot become nothing so your transformation must be based on a reference i can tell you why many believers do not grow because one we are ignorant of the methodologies of growth number two we do not even have an idea we know in theory that we should be like by telling me that i should be i should be like um so 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 and so person and now i don't know that person so how can i know what if you tell me to dress promise please stand if you tell me to dress like promise right i will have to come i will have to see him and see how he dressed and then try to replicate the dressing are we together but if i have not been able to see promise i do not know him it's going to be difficult for me it's a standard that is almost impossible not because the raw materials are out of reach but there is no reference so the bible says looking up to jesus and he calls jesus not just savior jesus has many names in the bible and one of the names as far as our transformation is concerned is the author and the finisher of our faith meaning that when you come into the faith life the kingdom life your gaze should continually be on jesus to refuse to be distracted by the vicissitudes of life and the things that can stem out of nowhere to set your gaze and focus on jesus christ and the bible says that now the lord is that spirit right he says where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty then the bible goes further to say now we all with unveiled face beholding him not them 
not it money is it fame is it are we together promotion is it the bible says don't behold it you will get it but the object of your focus is beholding him as in a mirror he says we are changed from one dimension of glory to the other ever increasing glory even as by the spirit of the lord so the moment i set my gaze on jesus christ no matter what it is that happens once my gaze is fixed on him there is an assurance that eventually i will begin to look like the one that i'm gazing at and as far as i've read my bible i do not see anything in jesus that is not de desirable by men is it the crown upon his head is it the brightness of his glory is it the majesty that surrounds his throne the bible says if i look at it you know we want the things that are on in and around jesus and we want to get them looking away from him focusing on those things the throne room is a place of wealth and abundance the throne room is a place of majesty and splendor the throne room is a place of excellence the throne room is a place of power and so when i fix my eyes on jesus sooner or later you find out that you are looking at a man but then you are becoming him but not just him generically you are becoming every dimension of him you are seeing are we together so i fix my eyes on jesus and suddenly something begins to happen to my finances i fix my eyes on jesus something begins to happen to my influence i fix my eyes on jesus something begins to happen to my understanding i fix my eyes on jesus something begins to happen to my authority he says looking up to jesus and if you do not have an idea of who that jesus is then it is dangerous because there are many things if no one ever tried to be jesus or god in the bible it would be easy but now there are many gods in the bible and there are many saviors supposedly that means if you don't know the one you are looking for someone else can substitute him and say i am god and you will innocently look up to that person or that thing believing you are looking at god and you will be changed into that thing it's only that at the end you will look at your life and say this was not how i started there will be no representation of beauty and glory in your life are we together so pray a prayer before i start open my eyes oh lord grant me the miracle of open eyes open my eyes to see a man cannot see until your eyes are opened hallelujah listen let me tell you this before we get to the word the more i know god and the more i study scripture the more i know what our problem is as men let me tell you one of the major problems of men we think revelation is something you get are we together we know that our lives are dependent on the light we have there is no place in scripture where a man was instructed to pursue light everywhere in scripture is light coming listen very carefully for as long as you believe you have the power to get light then the light of god will never come these truths that we teach they are very exact it's a body of spiritual knowledge that is given to you don't forget this scripture a man can receive nothing a man can receive nothing receive nothing until it is given what god does not send to you from heaven can never enter your hand 
so th there's no point seeking around your assignment when the bible says seek and you will find the idea is not to go around the word seek there in its root word is not to search as it were is really the word position yourself it's more of a posture than it is of a searching there are things you can never see by studies no this is beyond the realm of education this is beyond the realm of intellect although your intellect will participate in communicating it but it does not come from the realm of intellect there is a wisdom that is sophia human wisdom is a product of age and your exposure to science but there is a wisdom that comes from above are we together now so I, I i need you to understand that these spiritual things are not necessarily things that you learn true revelation comes you are made a partaker you fellowship with that mystery it's a fellowship you are called into it that's the reason why when you communicate that wisdom the dimension of this it's ancient is older than you predates you predates your christian experience and even predates your level of spiritual exposure it tells you that wisdom is coming from a realm that is older higher and more superior than you so really the prayer is not to to search around the prayer is to position yourself so that that light can come to you but when that light comes to you and you receive it according to the authority of scripture the bible says you must arise and shine if that light comes you can know when the light has come by the possibilities that are now captured in your life i will continue to teach us that our lives not necessarily immediately but our lives with time and that time is not forever and that time is not your lifetime your lifetime is too long with time because we operate by times and seasons it becomes unfair to expect everything to happen in your life in one day no you are not living in the realm of eternity you are living in the realm of time so many things in your life are time dependent they are time dependent for three reasons one there is a spiritual law called the law of process and so there are things in life that the speed has already been regulated by god your being serious with god or not cannot increase the speed it will happen within that time then there there is time that is regulated that is based on your insight and obedience so you can slow down and increase that pace of achievement based on the insight that comes to you and the application of that truth and then of course time can be regulated based on the hindrances the spiritual hindrances are we together yes and the spiritual hindrances are only three number one covenants number two disobedience number three um what's the third one demonic attack the devil can hinder you i desire to come to you once and again but satan hindered us so satan can hinder men so i don't expect that pastor femi in one day on hearing the truth of scripture no matter how accurate i do not expect you to enter into the experiential fullness of everything overnight in fact in fact if that happens to you is proof that something went wrong and jesus grew in wisdom in stature in favor with god and with men are we together ye shall receive power after that the holy ghost is come upon you 
and you shall be witnesses unto me you would have just said all over the earth but he broke it into dimensions jerusalem samaria judea and to the utmost part of the earth so it's very very important but let me submit to you ask any man that has been granted access to the spirit of revelation if they are honest enough with you they will tell you it did not come from the abundance of the study of scripture the study of scripture is important it helps to prime your spirit man like you prime a pump but the real revelation comes from God to you it comes as light and then depends on the quality of your mental enlightenment to break it down into the truths that that light communicates God does not speak English God does not speak Greek he doesn't speak French he doesn't speak Spanish or Hausa or English he speaks light his language is light are we together yes and the only faculty of your tripartite being that can receive light is your spirit man so when that light comes upon your spirit man you have it but then it is not useful to you being locked up in the realm of the spirit and interfacing your spirit and your body where it is needed remember the earth realm is where all these spiritual realities are required they are not just required to remain in the realm of the spirit otherwise there will be no need for transformation once that light comes upon you that's enough but you need it translated here and now are we together and that technology of transfer is what we must learn the eyes of your understanding being flooded with light that you may know so you begin to have understanding and when you have understanding i've taught you that this body does not have power on its own are we together when your spirit leaves your body you are called dead dead means that your body is inactive so the body is a slave somewhat or better still the body is an executor the assignment of the body is to execute the conclusions of your spirit your soul whatever your body decides i mean whatever your spirit man decides or whatever is decided in the solical realm your body is now authorized to execute it so if my body continues to go to region and continues to capture experiences that are destructive to the health of my life and my destiny the problem is not the body the problem is that something is happening in the realm of the spirit and if you are a believer then the problem is not from your spirit man the problem is from the solical realm that's where the battle is now why because he that is joined to Christ is one spirit are, are you getting this listen what I'm showing you now are, these are the fundamentals of Christianity it's important that you know them it's amazing how many believers get born again and they are absolutely clueless about the faith life and we preachers have a lot of repentance to do in terms of the miscommunication of truths because we do not guide believers methodically we just randomly bring truths anyhow and so they continue to receive truths that are not progressive there is no synergy in their growth they cannot connect the usefulness of a revelation to another experience so they have many experiences but they are disjointed i can't see the relevance of this topic to this one there should be a sequence are we together yes there should be a sequence to your spiritual growth that means that come my dear that means i should be able to teach you something now and then you come you should hold her hands you should be able to connect what i taught you are we together like a ladder it should lead you to the next you stand here level of life and then i should connect you this is how growth happens if your truths are not sequential 
you will get a lot of spiritual information but not coordinated enough to reveal Christ in your life this is the tragedy of many believers so when I switch on your laptop I see many sermons I see many topics I see many um, exegesis of scripture theological dissertations that have come from different people different schools of ministry and so on and so forth and on the abundance of those information you can pride yourself to believe you are growing but the problem is that truths were supplied but not sequentially arranged are we together so somewhere in your spiritual life they taught you about prosperity you don't know where it fits in the graph somewhere in your spiritual life they taught you about character somewhere in your spiritual life they taught you about service in the house of god are we together somewhere come in your spiritual life they taught you about demonology deliverance warfare somewhere in your spiritual life they taught you about prayer are, 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 you, are you following me now somewhere in your spiritual life they taught you about whatever it is now these informations are all useful but you find out that you have them yet your life does not testify that you have light the problem is not the scarceness of light the problem is the sequential arrangement of truth notice how Jesus began to teach the people Jesus officially started his mentorship with what we call the Beatitudes it was an exe exegesis on the kingdom life gradually he began to lead them then he started getting deeper he got to a point that was so deep people ran away and he said will you also go he said to whom shall we go you alone have the words of life by the time we get to john 14 15 he's now introducing the holy spirit never did he introduce the holy spirit before that time then he got to a point where jesus himself was almost frustrated he said i have many things to tell you but ye cannot capacity capacity you don't have the capacity to bear them he says how be it no cause for concern when he the spirit of truth is come he will guide you he didn't say he will give you truth many people want to get truth they don't want to be guided in truth listen carefully you can get truth but when you are guided you are shown the sequential arrangement of truth in a way and manner that can stamp the gates of hell this is where the problem is there is almost nothing you will tell an average believer that he's hearing for the first time it may just be in a more with more theological accuracy or with more intellectual prowess but the central thought is almost always known yet our results our lives are not looking for new things our lives are looking for a rearrangement a sequential arrangement something you knew before prosperity is why prosperity does not bless you are you getting what i'm saying now something that you should not hear there there are messages that you were supposed to hear first before hearing about success and since you did not hear it what is now light has turned to a sword that is killing you It is for this cause that he gave unto some apostles and prophets are we together and evangelists and pastors and teachers are we together now and then the bible says for the equipping the perfecting the word perfecting there is the maturing of the saints when you give birth to a baby a number of us here have children at the back we have our lovely children they are enjoying the comfort of the first days and months of their lives now only a wicked mother will give birth to a child and carry stock fish and put it in the mouth of that child or carry um, cow tail are we together it doesn't mean cow tail is destructive to someone else that's an answered prayer at a level you will sit down and pray and god will supply but now 
cow tail will be required in that baby's life but somewhere but now when you give the child cow tail you give the child every kind of thing you will soon find out that your child is dead what killed the child food food did you ever learn that food can kill it's not only poison that kills it is not only wrong things that kill good things not arranged sequentially can kill the prosperity of fools shall destroy them it is not the prosperity is that that guy was a fool he needed to be wise first so you the word of god that was allocated to translate him from the realm of foolishness to wisdom and what is wisdom the bible says the fear of the lord is the beginning of wisdom so you taught that guy about prosperity and you did not inculcate in him the fear of god you watch what he would do to his mother or father when the money comes What I'm sharing is powerful. This is not even my message. I, I don't know how I got here. But this is powerful. Sometimes the Lord just distracts us like that to speak to people. It can be a prophetic word for someone. That look, 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 look. Your journey of ever learning. Your journey of priding yourself with the vastness of spiritual information will full frustrate you. Because you will find out that someone does not have one tenth of your knowledge. But the little he has was so sequentially arranged. His life will show that he's growing properly. So the average church member doesn't even carry a Bible again. What's the point? Open to the book of First John. He said, I know this is the record. Look at the person who is talking. He daily loads us with benefits the person who is talking now does not have transport back home now i'm, I'm not talking of initial i don't ever blame any christian when it does not have results from the instance it is okay and it is normal but when you have dwelt around the place of light for a while and your life refuses to bear that witness then it's proof that something is wrong and we can easily diagnose the problem number one will be to check in the area of ignorance if we find out that ignorance is not the problem then number two we we'll check the quality of the information be careful less what you call light be darkness so you can call darkness light isaiah chapter 9 when you read i think verse 2 or thereabout I can't remember it says the people that walked in darkness have seen a great light until the great light came they didn't even know that what they were walking in is called darkness it says that they who were of the valley of the shadow of death upon them a light has come we can be galloping in a lot of ignorance justified either by science or culture etc and believe that based on the abundance of this information we have light there is the true light that lighted every man there are other lights that cannot light any man they can light other things but they can't light men animals have a principle that they work with is that true most of the principles that the animals work with are not applicable to men the principle the animals work with is light but that light cannot light any man in their world and in their kingdom and in their sphere of reality remember all power belongs to god so the principle there is not an invention of science it is god's allocation that helps the animal kingdom to also behave well but because we are the highest of god's creation many of those truths they are truths but not applicable to us there are some of those truths that are applicable to us that's why god punishes foolish men by sending them back to the animal kingdom he said go and study my ways as given to the ants you are a lazy man you are a sluggard you are reducing yourself through laziness so i refer you to a lower dimension of my kingdom study the ants that they do not have a king they do not have 
this kind of organization so when you study you come back every time men refused to learn the laws of their realm they were degraded Nebuchadnezzar was turned into what? What was he turned into? For seven years, only his brain was left the brain of a man, but every other thing was that of a beast. And there was a lesson he refused to learn as a man. So when he became a beast, he learned that lesson. At the end of seven years, Nebuchadnezzar wrote a sermon you should pay attention to. He exalted the name of the Lord. Are we together now? They know not, neither will they understand. 82 and verse 5 of Psalms. They know not, neither will they understand. It says they walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course. The next verse says, have I not said... Or I have said, ye are gods, and all of you, not some, all of you are children of the Most High. The next verse is a tragedy. It says, but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of these princes. So the tragedy, please hear me again. Sometimes, there are times that it's just plain ignorance. Are we together? But there are times that it is not ignorance. It is the inability to sequentially arrange truth. Many years ago, the Lord did something in my life. It's a personal dealing, so it's not something that you can build a doctrine out of. Um, the Lord prohibited me from studying my Bible for one week, complete one week. That's why I said it's a personal dealing. Yours may be an attack. Don't mistake in that what that it may be the same thing. Because God did not tell you. Yours is laxity. That's why I said it's a personalized dealings. Satan uses words to deceive men. Ye are clean through the word that I've spoken to you. For one week I did not read my Bible. Not because I didn't want to. I didn't understand the morale of the dealing until I was done. And this was the whole object behind it. The, the, the entire focus, the entire objective behind it was to bring me to a point where I would realize that I was ever learning but never coming in experience to the knowledge of the truth. Are we together? Yes. So I was getting, you know, those days, well, now we're still passionate about God, but there's something about the journey of a believer. It's like marathon. Once they blow the whistle, on your mark, get set, ready. Sometimes you are even, your, your blood is as hot as whatever. Go! And you see someone running as if that is going to stop just at the door. So that zeal, that fire, Greek, this concordance, lexicon, you know, just study anything. Once you see a strange word, ah, pneumatology, okay? This is, I should add this very quickly. Homenetics, homiletics, ah. So we were just learning things that were just scattered revelation, spiritual, but scattered. And the rate of change versus the, the effort was not commensurate. And it was a call for concern. And so God was trying to save me trouble. I would have been in big trouble now. Let me tell you why many Christians are angry. And don't believe that others are using God's power entirely. I will tell you why. They are aware of the effort that was put in. To arrive, to, to take one step. It's like they did a labor of five years. So when they see you soaring in the spirit, they say something is wrong. Something is wrong. I started learning 10 years, 7 years, 5 years ago and you just came and right now in 2 years you are in this level. Not so. One of the greatest blessings that can happen to you is that when you are born again, God plants you under an anointing and plants you under a grace that sustains enough spiritual intelligence, enough balance 
Ah, huh? spiritual intelligence and balance. These two things, grace and truth. When it is grace alone, you are in trouble. When it is truth alone, you are still in trouble. It is full of grace and truth. So when God plants you under a ministry or under a man of God, many of us, the real tragedy in your life was not the attack that came from your foundation. The real tragedy, now I say that respectfully, was probably the spiritual system you were planted in when you got born again. Because your zeal made your heart open for any information. Unfortunately, many of us received chaffs. It didn't kill you, but you were not healthy either. Because the prodigal son ate the food of, of pigs. He didn't die, but you can't say he was healthy. That's how it is spiritually. Please listen very carefully. Shepherds can destroy people. How did Moses find a wife? Read your Bible. It was shepherds that came to drive the women. Remember, the family where Moses' wife came from. They were shepherds. The women would come to feed their cattle. And those shepherds would come to drive them and fetch water. And Moses came and beat the living daylight out of those people. It is important. There are shepherds that watch their flock by night. But there are shepherds that kill their flocks. He said, I will give you pastors after my own heart. Please listen to this because tomorrow you will be the one mentoring a lot of people. Spiritual growth is a school. It's a school with an exact curriculum. That God will help you. The sequential revelation of truth matters. It does. I'm telling you this. There are many things we know about God that are wrong. There are many things we don't know about God that should be known. The dimension of breakthrough you desire requires a certain kind of revelation. Light is the currency that we use to purchase spiritual realities. I used to think it's faith. But it's not faith. Faith is simply the credit card that you use. But what really pays for it is light. Hmm. It, from the abundance of these things, then you will know who God is. And you can worship him in spirit and in truth. There are things you can know about God that makes you unbendable, immovable. Nobody comes to sway you toe and fro with every wind of doctrine and the slight of men wherein they lie to deceive, the Bible says. It's important. Now, before I get to my sermon, this is, this, I can't believe that I've still not started preaching. Look at these people. Please start. Look at these people. Which dimension of your spiritual life has not been arranged accurately there are people who are not even born again because you check the truths that they have salvation is not part of it they never got born again they were just born in a family just because you were not in a beer parlor does not mean you are safe so they started like that they started playing keyboard in church like this guy is playing now from keyboard he became um assistant music director are you seeing that now from assistant music director you became music director from music director you became deacon huh yes from deacon they open a branch just when you are graduating and they call you pastor whoever you are now the truth is that whether or not you think you have grown according to god's order there is a pattern God is a God of patterns. He's not just a God of motion. He's a God of patterns. How you move and how you grow will determine whether you will become that which is in his heart. Now, this is the interesting thing about God. Even when you think you have been working with God, like we arrogantly say, for 15 years, the day he reveals himself to you, 
he will rearrange your life back. And sometimes when he, he rearranges your life by trying your works with fire, it's in the Bible. That means you can see a lot of achievements and the fire of his light will come. And all that will be left is your true state. That means God will say, you men say you are in level 5, you level 15, but really you are just at level 1. Now, you are at liberty to choose whether you will pay the price unashamedly to start properly with God or allow the ego that you have to just make you continue. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You are the king. There is none other. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You are the King. There is none other. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. So men can call you MOG. Men can call you deacon. Men can call you this and that. But the truth is that if you are not growing and building according to pattern, I hate to be a bearer of bad news. But let me tell you, you are only wasting your time. When God comes, he never continues from where, what you were doing. Look at what happened to Abraham. When he met Abraham at all of the Chaldeans, this was his instruction. Abraham, come out of thy father's house and out of thy kindred i hope you know at that time abraham was not a failure at least he had some results he had 200 plus servants he had cattle he had a number of things and said abraham don't think i'm coming to continue from there i will start with you again let's start that journey this is what brought some of you here some of you are already pastors men of god leaders some of you here were youth pastors before you got admission you carried youth pastor mentality and just came and god said no way come and sit down and if you are not careful and please every pastor here this this are not vice don't just see someone come because they said he came from so 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 ministry or so 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 parish and in that parish he was the music director and you just say, okay no problem come and sit down and play keyboard and the guy comes with that celebrity mindset because in his church spiritual growth is not necessary in his church just attendance and loyalty is what is and, and sowing of seeds here and there but now this requirement requires you to sit down many celebrities get born again i mean secular celebrities now they get born again and come to church and then we just transfer their fame of the world and just add anointing on it. Not God. You are joking. Not God. Mm -mm. Not God. Not the God of the heavens. When you come, everybody starts from class one. Even Jesus, when he came, the father didn't even pity Jesus to say, okay, you are Jesus. I mean, this is me. He started right from scratch. At age 12 I imagine what was in the mind of Jesus when he was reading himself thou shall love the Lord your God and the rabbis were saying I hope you are learning it and he was just watching the force that holds what he's reading and not even Jesus was promoted like that he had to wait at age 12 he was learning what do you think you are to just jump the steps favor does not jump step so you hear that because our idea of shortcut must be balanced favor is shortcut yes but it is not shortcut to alienate you from information that you hear favor is a system that was designed to help you because men do not start life in an ideal way please listen if i was teaching our precious school of ministry students the graph of life yesterday the good old graph of life if you are not part of school of ministry join even if it's just because of that if you don't change after that teaching 
I don't know what will change you in this life again. The graph of life. Are we together? If I get born again 40 years, how many of you know that I'm blessed, but that's a disadvantage with respect to earthly time? We don't have forever on earth. Now, I got born again 40 years and someone got born again at age 3. Who has more advantage than the other? And don't say we are all equal. You are not equal. This guy has time. Time. At age 3, born again. At age 4, filled with the Holy Ghost. At age 5, being mentored by a visionary father. When that child becomes 12, he is now you of 70 at age 12. Now listen, let me show you, listen, listen, don't just laugh. Let me show you the relevance of things like mercy, favor. These things are not just random things. God looked at the way man works on earth and said, if I don't add these other things, man will never become the fullness of God's grace. So here and there, he interjects your work with life with these acts of his benevolence to help you. This is where things like favor are important. If you don't have favor in life, you, you will succeed. The problem is you will only succeed if your life is ideal. Nobody's life is ideal, including Jesus. They hid Jesus because somebody wanted to kill him. Until Herod died. And he said, okay, now you can go. There were things he would have been doing within that time. Mephibosheth, because a midwife... I, I, I'm, am I alone in this place this night? Mephibosheth was a sincere person. The midwife that held him was careless. And because of her carelessness, that guy fell down and broke his leg. Now, sorry would not solve that problem. Because there are things he will never be able to do. So how does God help this man's destiny? By allowing him to live life the way it should be? So God introduces things like mercy. Thou shall arise and have mercy. And looks at him God. And he knows. He looks at the way man should go. And looks at the way man goes. This guy was called to be a prophet to the nations. This is his destiny. Are we together now? According to God's predeterminate counsel. The destiny of this gentleman. Like Jeremiah. Is to be a prophet to the nations. But it so happened that the womb that would give birth to him married an unbeliever. Now listen to this. I hope you know this is not his fault. It's just that the woman that should marry him because she didn't have enlightenment or she was deceived or misled now got married to a non-Christian. You, you, you get what I'm saying? Now this guy, according to the blueprint of his life, he should have finished his assignment at 70 if he starts his journey at 1. But because of what he has to fight, an extra battle that was not in the original plan is now here. And that battle is the battle of grafting him out of this family first. And listen to me. Sometimes this gentleman has no legitimate ground to leave the house until he gets to university. So his destiny will have to wait till what what age do you get to invest? In? 17. This guy has to wait for 17 years. Are you getting the point now? Because according to God's blueprint, that is the safest way for him to live. If he lives in a way that they, they can kill him, and God, for the sake of his destiny, will not allow him that. Now, while he's waiting for that 17 years, his brain is not closed. He's learning a lot of things he must undo. Because you cannot be in my house and not serve my God. So while he's bowing down and doing all of these things, heaven is bleeding. Because according to the blueprint, by age five, this guy should already be seeing visions. But now, the, and Satan, when he peeps there, Satan will make sure that the clerics isolate this guy and further indoctrinate him to complicate destiny. I show you why it's dangerous. It's not enough to be saved. Where you are planted can determine how you grow.
please parents let me tell you something and even those who have children now don't sit down and say it does not matter where they hear truth it matters sit down and waste your child's time hearing nonsense wasting his time at the end of it you will find out that there is no sequential growth please listen I'm telling you, I'm teaching something entirely different. This is my note. I've not even started. But if this is how the Holy Ghost wants it this night, I think it, this, is, this is a deep and mature teaching. I'm, I'm correcting the reason why the Christian experience of many believers is just, is just a buffet of frustrations. I agree that an area or two of your life may be trusting, be needing the hand of God. But when every area fails, something is wrong. This one is no longer the law of process. Apostle, nothing is working in my life. I've been a Christian from 2001. I tell you where the problem is. I tell you. And the problem is not only an attack. An attack looks like the obvious reason. But I'm telling you now, there is no prophet, no pastor, no apostle that will just pray over the issue of attack alone and then your life changes no you want holistic growth we must do the diagnosis tonight to know what is wrong back to my story this gentleman is loitering somewhere very far from god and far from destiny are we together now he gets to the university after 17 years 17 years has been wasted when he gets there now the devil will try to do all kinds of things for instance the devil can ensure that his first cgpa is 1.2 1 point what who will listen to god under that kind of condition the pressure from life will make him say do you know what let me find a fellowship where in 30 minutes they finished now it doesn't mean please i hope you understand that i'm not being sarcastic to any the fire on this guy's destiny is being quenched because you you call it circumstances but these are intentional orchestrations and then this gentleman one day that's why inviting people to the house of god if you are sure of the quality of what you are receiving then it is evil to not invite people this is not the issue of evangelism this this you being an extension of god's mercy because the person you will be inviting you think you are just inviting you don't know you are acting prophecy imagine that this guy now is in zaria in this situation imagine what heaven will do to you as the person who holds his hand to insist he comes to koinonia you thought you just invited a man but you literally shifted a destiny literally because of one encounter are you with me this night now it's very important some of you are now seeing now do you know that heaven will rejoice when this gentleman comes you have invited five six people but all of them don't have the same destiny this guy ordained to be a prophet to the nations did you really invite one person how many people did you invite he will give you flimsy excuse excuses i've not eaten and the holy ghost will say feed him and you are like holy spirit what is all this one i don't have transport and you bring him now imagine that you bring him for koinonia and then i'm not ready working for others the moment you enter except your feet that something must happen and reduce you back to look like your parents You can choose to believe what i'm saying no problem i don't know who prayed for you before you arrived but let me tell you sincerely if you know that there was no salvation in your past please hear what i'm saying seriously and pay attention to it altars are wicked they are like time nothing can fight them they will move slowly unperturbed by your pride until they catch up with you hallelujah i heard of a man of god that bought truck this dangote truck they kept advising him to diversify and that guy carried all his money i don't know how much that truck is but it's so expensive the moment the person bought that truck 
I, I, he was coming along, I think Kogi or so, the road. That was how that thing just capsized. It burnt in a way, burnt everything inside and burnt everything about that man. And the guy sat down and was almost killing himself. Who taught you what you know spiritually? Forget about the one Koinonia taught you. What is it resting upon? Because some of you, this is why you are not experiencing the outstretched arm of God. Now, I don't mean, I don't mean I love the body of Christ, but I have to tell you the truth. There are men of God and there are churches that are wonderful, but they are not healthy for a foundation for your spiritual growth. No. The context of what is taught is pungent and dangerous for your spiritual growth. Salt is good. But if you fetch one mudu of rice to cook and you fetch one mudu of salt to cook, is that a blessing? No. There are truths that are like salt. They are sprinkled and is enough. By the time you carry that truth, the same size of rice and combine everything, you will deal and kill somebody. There are people, the sermons they had is why they never saw the necessity of prayer in their spiritual work. Are we together? They came from a highly intellectual family. And you see people just laugh and say, demons, the only demon you have is a demon in your brain and your mind. And the devil says, wow, this is wonderful. For the child who comes from the church, the house of an evangelist and a prayer warrior, that is a correct sermon. But for you who is coming from a foundation where they wrote your name, when they gave birth to you, while you were a baby, your head was inside water and they were speaking nonsense to your destiny and you believe you would just casually say, in Jesus' name, I'm born again. No, sir. The same way you don't say casually money come and it comes. There are systems and there are principles. The same way too, if you are not careful, you can be born again in a ministry that all they see is demons. Did you hear what I said? everything is demons and then there is serious trouble because you will never have the enlightened mind that will keep you in victory your entire life will be full of warfare and fear because that is the context of the education that you received so when it's time to be responsible and understand the systems of the kingdom you will not so all you will keep doing in your life is to pray what knowledge should bring to you you are trying to get it through prayer are we together now when you should learn when you hear sermons like sermons on destiny help us sermons on excellence the law of honor you just ignore it and say all i know is that there is a witch in this family you will find out that even when the person you have been calling a witch dies you will celebrate and nothing will change because the issue of which was already settled but the remaining issues, in fact, the weightier matters that required spiritual enlightenment. The person who mentored you did not call you to see the necessity. It's a blessing to have a good pastor over you. It's a blessing to have a man of God that can draw the boundaries that are relevant to your growth and construct you like a building. I will give you pastors after my heart. This is a mistake we're making in ministry now. We just ordain people anyhow. The moment someone looks handsome, charismatic, can dress well, you just say, come, you are, you are pastor this and that. Arrogantly stand on stage and confuse people. At the end of it, the people don't know what they believe again. It's nine o'clock. Let's pray. We can't hear this kind of thing and just round up. We are going to pray seriously. First and foremost, hold the hands of someone and blast in tongues first to prepare your spirit. Find a neighbor and pray seriously. Ela bakata baruska baranda kata 
Prayer is not for prayer warriors. Prayer is for any man who intends to be changed, to be lifted, and to become great in life and destiny. Salabaranda kaprakato sepeles. Pray, pray, pray. Chile parakato jambra kata embra kete kete baruto soto preke devela. My Christian experience must be fruitful. I must bear fruit. I must bear fruit. I must bear fruit in my life. Barakato sabrandega de balash. Embreketo kashata barata segete balakata brandega de balash. Embreketo shabros kalaka po shata brandega de. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You are going to pray this night for your destiny. You are going to call it by name and declare that in this season, my destiny open, 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 open up. He said, Lo, I come. Please pray, please pray. Destiny, in the name of Jesus, be open. Shekete kaparaka to pariketa, embrata leka paronda shalaka tabariata. My assignment, my destiny, open up. In the name of Jesus, no wasting time, no rambling around. Open up in the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God. Lo, I come in the volume of the book as it is written of me. Outside, are you praying? Make sure you are praying from the depth of your heart. Shabarakata. Empra kato sheke te leke te ke te ke te ke te. Empra kato soto pa kura kata paria. Open up, open up, open up. In the name of Jesus, open up. Open up, lekata barata shote reketaba. Open up, in the name of Jesus. Open up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. Please listen to me. 
you are going to pray and you are going to cry to God and say Lord every every disarrangement of truth in my life that has been responsible for my stunted growth I pray by the Spirit of God rearrange my life rearrange my destiny what I have believed wrongly correct it oh God I am open I'm not a rebel Let your emphasis be my emphasis. Pray. More than what a man of God said. Arrange my life sequentially. Arrange my destiny sequentially. Who am I to meet in this season? Who must enter my life in this season? Based on your arrangement. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. Please don't think you are you are wasting your time. You are praying seriously. Now, I say this with all humility. Listen. Please listen. Imagine if till now I was still trying to hear God concerning koinonia. Are you seeing now? Imagine there are people according to the blueprint of your assignment. You are not supposed to be looking for money now. You are supposed to have it already because the next phase of your life is dependent on that supply. There are people right now, at according to God's blueprint, the level of prophetic you should be operating in, it is required for the kind of assignment. But because you are still here, God cannot move with you. Hear me. Hear me. There are ladies, according to God's blueprint, you should be ready for marriage now based on the sequence of your destiny but it's right now you are getting serious with your life hear me hear me there are some of you according to the sequence of destiny it's you and your elder brother that should be standing as pillars but the devil killed your brother from bed that means you are carrying the burden of two people you need your grace plus the grace that will come on you else so when you pray one hour God will say add it to because you were supposed to pray only an hour because there's someone else holding it with you but he's alive and he's drinking around and God's agenda must move forward so you must build stamina to be able to carry it listen listen to me please listen I'm speaking by the spirit don't think I'm just talking anyhow listen to me please listen there are families according to the design of God you are supposed to be three men but the devil made sure no man come to that family it was later on you showed up sometimes as the last born and now you have to stand in a position of three men as one man there are families it's supposed to be you and your father and your pastor. But now your father did not serve the Lord or your father has died. God will not change his purposes. His plans can change. But his purposes remain eternal. Listen. Listen. There are families according to God's design. You should never even try to say, okay, I'm looking for two or three jobs. Because according to that design, your father should have been responsible to help you with an inheritance. But now the devil hijacked that destiny. And the way you are right now, if you fail, there is no more hope for your family. Because everyone that came to help, the devil took 
them out of the way. You know it. I like you to pray and say, Lord, I will not fail you, and I will not fail destiny. Is someone praying? Lord, I will not fail you. I will not fail destiny. If it depends on me, then I will not fail. If it depends on me, if it depends on me to change the course of my family, if it depends on me to enthrone Jesus over my family, if it depends on me, I will not fail. Someone pray. Pray with the picture of your loved ones in your mind. Pray with the picture of your children on your mind. Pray with the picture of your destiny on your mind. If it depends on me, I will not fail. It may take time, but I will not fail. Hallelujah. I wish you people knew that song. Atmosphere, shift now. Huh? You may not know it. I just, I just had that song in my spirit. I will not fail if it depends on me. I think about my life with all humility. And I think about the destinies that would have gone down even if I were born again and I refused to answer the call. Listen, the next prayer point, we are praying. Listen, Spirit of the living God, if I am found anywhere that my destiny does not require, turn me around. Bring me back to the place of destiny. Lift your voice and pray. If I found myself anywhere that my destiny does not require, turn me around. Please pray, pray, pray. Align me to destiny. Align me to destiny. Align me to destiny geographically. Align me to destiny relationally. Align me to destiny financially. Allow me to align me to destiny spiritually. Align me to destiny, oh God. Pray that prayer and watch your life change. Align me to destiny. Let me stop rambling around. Bring me to the place, the path of destiny. Hallelujah. Listen, listen. It was never my intention, never my intention to be in Zaria. It would have been the last place for me to think of being at this time. But you see, there's something about destiny. There are people when the devil wants to waste their time, they will get American visa and travel and roam around America. Just because you are making some money does not mean you are in destiny. Look at how God brought some of you here. God carried you from different places. It's destiny. Forget about the story that brought you. Align me to destiny. Let me not find... Listen, let me tell you this. There are people, when the devil wants to destroy their destiny... They will receive certain kinds of promotions. You would think uh, is promotion is not wrong in itself, but they will receive a promotion and become a CEO. 
and that CEO will not allow them to do and be certain things. Life is more than money. Oh. Life is more than fame. Are we together? Next prayer point. Lord, where am I supposed to have been in destiny that I am not? I pray by the Spirit in this season, take me there. Take me there. I should not be at this level. In ministry, financially, maritally, spiritually, pray by your spirit. Bring acceleration to my life. There is no more time to waste. The voice of my generation is crying. Speedy manifestation, oh God, of all that pertains to my destiny in this season. hallelujah hallelujah now listen to me the next prayer point i will have to teach you a little to understand covenants are systems of advantage please listen a covenant is more than an agreement it's a system that provides an advantage in life listen to me carefully you reign in life based on the privilege of the advantage that you have. Are we together now? Yes. Advantage. Every time you see anything that spells an advantage in the Bible, you must study it. Everybody rose based on an advantage. Joshua stood before Jericho helpless like any leader would be, except that he was standing on an advantage it was that advantage that brought the captain of the lord's army he said i am here daniel would have died in babylon except for the advantage he was standing on and based on that advantage gabriel came and said i am come to give you understanding and he understood the times that was allocated for the liberation Abraham was standing on a covenant and so he saw in a vision that God's people would be in captivity for 400 years. Please listen to me. This thing I'm teaching you is a deep teaching. Your destiny will remain on the ground until there is a system of advantage. I repeat, the knowledge of God is not based on covenant. Your spiritual growth but kingdom advancement and the advancement of your life and destiny is based on systems of advantage. Are we together? And there are many systems of advantage. I hope that in the coming weeks, just brace up for the teachings that will come in the coming weeks because there are things that we need to learn. An advantage. There are systems of advantage. Listen to what Haman, when Haman went to his family, his brethren, and Haman told them, he said, look at what Esther did to me. They put their hands on their head. They said, Haman, you are finished. This woman is a Jew. Looked at him and said, whose son are you? Not who trained you. Not what weapons do you have. I need to know what advantage you are carrying to stand before Goliath. When he stood before Goliath, Goliath said, am I a dog? Am I a dog that you stand before me and come with a sling? Are you trying to catch a goat? And David said, you come to me with your spheres and your bows. But I come to you, listen, in a name. Ah, I wish we could deal with this. Because you see, a name in the spirit is a revelation of a dimension of God. 
God's dimensions are stored in his names. I came with a name. Are we together now? And foolish Goliath, instead of him to ask, are you a Jew? He kept quiet. What do you think made Jericho to close their gate? They said, who are the guys coming to attack us? The moment they said they were Jews, they close the gate. Close it quickly. We know these guys. There is a track record. There is a strange God that works with them. Ah! There are men who there are things they are standing on. And based on those systems of advantage, I tell you, they can fail in other things, not finances. No. They can make the most stupid financial decisions. Yet what they stand upon will bail them out. Have you seen families like that? All their children must be leaders. Must be leaders. It doesn't matter what happens. Whether it's a village school or whatever. The girl must be head girl. The boy must be head boy. In a class of many people. Eventually they will be leaders. When you say. The J.F. Kennedy family. What comes to your mind? There are families that are a dynasty. It's not just business they were passing. They were platforms. Whether with fraternity with Satan or fraternity with God. But there was a system of advantage. I will never forget. I've always been a very brilliant person. I remember I was in Jess 1. This issue changed my life. I had always been the best student, effortlessly the best. In fact, I didn't know that people used to read during exams. Nobody ever asked me to go and read. If you were in my class, just give up. In terms of position, you are wasting your time. It's not only that I will take first, the gap I will give you will make you not to come near me again. And something happened. When I was in secondary school, the first time I was the best student. The second term, I think I was the best student or so. But the third term, the guy that took third before, the parents moved to living faith. Listen, oh. They moved to living faith. It didn't reach three months. They did anointing service for that boy. Straight when he came and wrote exams. When that, now, this is not about first or second. I'm just using it to explain something. When the results came out and I looked at my results, I looked at the guy. It, it wasn't, you know, I didn't know what I knew now. You can imagine a small boy. I said, no, something is wrong. Something has to be wrong. Because my best performance was this point. Something has to be wrong. That guy was, his average was just with like five marks. I said, no, there has to be a recalculation. Something is wrong. And then I met him. I said, in the spirit of sportsmanship, congratulations. And he laughed. He told me that they did anointing service for them in living faith. I said, what is living faith? It was later when I understood. I said, ah! I was standing on my brain. He was standing on an altar. Listen, sir, let me do this. Come. Tell us your testimony. Now, everybody stand and listen to this testimony. Go ahead. Um, I am a pastor. I was in Mubi before we got transferred to Abuja. Because of the distance and the financial constraint, we decided that my wife would not return back to school. So during uh, the last uh, her second semester exam, she didn't go and then... Uh, we attended Koinonia, uh, the miracle service uh, last month, and then with the resolve that she should go back to school. When she returned to school, they uploaded their results. Lo and behold, she had results. And all of the results were A. I mean B. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, you, you, I, I called him out so that he would talk. This is a pastor. She didn't do second semester. Or, what, what second semester? Semester. Because of, listen, because of financial constraint, which is justifiable. They now came down, he relocated, and then when all of that happened, 
he now planned because he had been had been in touch so it's not something that we're just talking i've been in touch this is not a license for laziness no it's just showing you that there are possibilities that's why i said the prayer i want you to pray now if i don't teach this you will not understand it woe betides a man who stands alone listen bishop oyedeko listen one man of god in the south south he was about to start ministry and then he went to bishop oyedeko for prayer and advice as you know they were releasing him and bishop oyedeko spoke to him in yoruba i wish i'm a yoruba person he said never fight alone that's my advice for you never fight alone I show you why many people continue to fall victims in life. So, the plan was that they will go back and then let the wife now register. Now that God has helped them, things have started changing. I'm explaining the story for you. They now went and said, okay, let's see how far. As they printed results, second semester result, A and B parallel. That's what came out as the wife's result. This man is a pastor. He has a congregation. He's a spiritual father to many. He will not come and mess up his integrity. And he's, this is a father with a wife and children. Listen. It is not to endorse laziness. But it's to let you know that this kingdom is a compendium of possibilities. Limited only by your spiritual understanding. God bless you, son. We are going to round up. But let's, we are going to pray this prayer. Systems of advantage. Abraham was an idol worshiper from a place called Or of the Chaldeans. Chaldeans were, were idol worshippers. They were necromancers. When God called him out, it still was not enough. God met him and said, I need to enter a covenant with you. If I just call you and I say, let's go to the promised land, you will still die. I have to provide a platform that becomes the basis of this new order. Are we together? many of you do not know that the secret to the future you've heard me say it is in the past before you move forward in life you have to go backwards please hear what i'm saying all these names that we have given this phenomena in life there whether you call it failure at the edge of breakthrough whether you call it spirit husband whether you call it spirit wife whether you call it rise and fall all those are invented names that's to tell you many people are having the same experience that's why they could receive it and understand the teaching that i did the mystery of deliverance part one to four that message has delivered people until we stand before god to see how many people were delivered When truths are taught with imbalance, it can destroy. Listen, there are things that God does for the sake of the fathers. There are things that God does for your own sake. Did you hear what I said? There are some of you now, you are in certain levels of blessings and favor. And in the name of honesty, you have nothing to do with it. Maybe your mother used to cook for pastors. Listen, no. Before you were born, your mother just said, me, you am not a woman of God. But all I keep doing is if there is any pastor, I will make sure I cook for them. One day, she cooked for a man who was not a pastor. She cooked for a system. And he swore a blessing and said, may your children be great. 
Now listen. That looks like a pronouncement. It's more than a pronouncement. And now you showed up. And when Satan is supposed to destroy you, between you and the destruction, the pronouncement comes in between you. My covenant will I not break, nor alter the thing that is gone out of my mouth. The same way Noah looked at Africa and cursed Africa and said, A servant of servants shall you be. As born again as we are, that curse is still in place today. Now, people are following from America and the rest, and I don't mean to insult you, but you see the level of spiritual depravity that is in America, the decadence, right? That when you put sex on phone, male of, or on a form, male or female, it's not only male or female that is there now, male, female, and then some others. Yet, in the midst of it, you expect God to be angry. And stand up and say, America, your glory has been withdrawn. <laughs> Every time he wants to do that, someone's prayer stands. Every time the coming of Jesus was about to be delayed, the prayer of Anna the prophetess stood in the realm of the spirit. Maranatha, come, come, come. I told you about my life that my mother prayed a prayer and had an agreement with God. She told the Lord, she said, Lord, my own father was a pastor. He died serving you. He said, please use either my brother, her younger brother now, or any of my sons to continue. Let it not be that this spiritual heritage is lost. She thought it was just a casual prayer. And then I showed up innocently but something was a system of advantage there are some of you today you don't have any past you don't have any bad record it's not because you are a nice person you are one of the most loose and careless person but simply because there was an ordinance upon your life that prevented all sorts of evil from happening to your life because of the destiny attached to you let me tell you this you have to know the systems of advantage that god provided are we together the yoruba people were given a grace upon their minds it's a grace god gave that territory a grace now what i'm teaching you is truth from god's word that the yoruba people as a nation were given many graces among them was the grace for the prophetic the eyes that see not necessarily hearing but the power of sight which was an extension of intellect is a grace please listen to me let me show you mysteries Igbo people were given the grace of courage and creativity is a grace that was given that you can drop an evil territorially is a grace. Any poor evil man you see is a lazy man because they already have an advantage. Listen, the north, and that includes the middle belt, the grace is the grace of leadership and governance. It's a grace. This is what the northerners take advantage of. They study these things, they don't just come out for election. They know that we are standing on an advantage. These are ordinances, my brothers and my sisters. In Mount Zion, the side of the north, the city of the great king. Are we together now? Leadership. So many times... When God wants you to be a spiritual leader, listen carefully. No matter where you are, in your voyage, you must touch the knot. No matter who you are. Listen carefully. This is where Bishop Oyedeko started from. This, no matter who, he will rout you because you must drink of that grace. Oh. 
How do I explain this thing? Are we together? When you say evil people like money, they don't like money. It is an advantage that has carved out a niche for them. Governance. There are few men of God who now lead the body of Christ who do not have an affiliation with something that brought them to the north. Notice that God, when God wants to announce you in Nigeria, you must touch Lagos. If your feet does not touch Abel Kuta and Lagos, you cannot be global from this country. Whether as a secular artist, I think we'll just end for today. It is those who have the eyes that see, that know. Many of you don't know why God carried you and brought you to Zaria. It's not just because of koinonia. It is because these are the systems of God. He will bring you and you make contact with the possibility that he planted within that territory. Lift your voice in one minute and say, Lord, the, the systems of advantage that you have provided for me, I walk into it. I walk into it. There is a heritage that we have. A territorial heritage. An intellectual heritage. A spiritual heritage. Hallelujah. Listen. Please listen. We're rounding up. I want you to get tonight's teaching. Please. I'd like you to give tonight's teaching to anybody you find. And tell him, please. Please. Listen. In fact, you can tell him it's a birthday gift from apostle to you. Take. Listen. This is not the kind of teaching... That you hear tonight and say wow wonderful <clears throat> this is the kind of teaching you will sleep and wake up with there are many things i have said that you did not hear but i guarantee you that if you understand what i taught this night there is no limit to your life you can take advantage of everything around you every territory has an advantage you can tap into the advantage that comes with it 
your church has an advantage your soil has an advantage your family has an advantage i know your father was a herbalist and a priest but that is the corrupted destiny of a prophet there is still an advantage that can be seen and can be activated hallelujah this is how we grow in the kingdom we don't just grow by will we don't just grow by luck listen let me tell you this this night i just chose to show you these are the things that work in the lives of extraordinary people it's not just that things are working anyhow no you see all this anointing the power of god breaking out anyhow it's not there are systems of advantage your life must learn it you must know it and you must know how to engage it every jew in israel knows he cannot fail born again or not meet any jew put any jew to be a board member of your company and you watch what starts happening no matter how foolish the decisions are the wealthiest people in america today are jews the greatest brands in the world today they are jews there is a history to the things we see there is a reason why boko haram thrives in the north they go outside the north they will fail north is the seat of governors there is an advantage in the territory they know this by divination the east is always a place associated with wisdom the magi wise men came from the east it's true the wickedness came from the seat of governance herod wanting to kill jesus so it should not surprise you that terrorism springs from the north the seat of governance and strangely enough the place that also looks like the seat of governance is also the place where revival rises hmm. that is the reason why you see the moves of god ministries like koinonia all these things are not they are not guessings they are pieces of a divine puzzle <laughs> are we together many of you are looking at me dumbfounded let's round up by one last prayer father in the name of your son jesus christ reveal to me every advantage that makes for my excelling in life from scripture from the ministry that i am under the grace from christ himself the chiefest of all advantages reveal to me let me know what i stand upon and the possibilities that are associated with that covenant please pray Hallelujah. 
hallelujah you know why the holy spirit decided to move this way to share this these are not things i share in a general meeting like this these are truths that you share when you are talking to leaders i don't know why god decided to allow this thing that's why i said please get it and listen to it you will think you understood what i said no your spirit man only appreciated what i said you will need to settle down because you will hear something from that message that will control your results and open you up to the next season this is how i live my life i never stand anywhere in ignorance of the advantage this world is too wicked you don't guess your advantage on the battlefront it's too risky tomorrow i'm on my way to lagos again i came back from kogi state yesterday there is an advantage i stand upon that gives me security over death my life is a very risky life if you live this kind of life and this kind of schedule and all you say is i know god will protect us one day you will land in trouble i am a giver as a person is both an office a hobby a desire and a responsibility and i know that the way i give is not recommended for an average person i'm telling you this you give that way you will have problems with your wife your husband your children that means there must be an advantage this is more than financial intelligence there must be a system provided that can allow for that dimension of God to continue unhindered. My work schedule. If you do what I do for two weeks, you will have a health challenge. Sincerely, I'm telling you this. I've been out of this town since Saturday. Only returned yesterday. Had to rush, come for school of ministry. And all today, I've been busy doing a lot of things. I'm here now this night as soon as i'm done i'm going to be counseling for over the next maybe two three hours heading back home barely have time to sleep tomorrow i'm heading to lagos straight into the morning session of a meeting and yet tuesday is my birthday you live like that something will happen to you if i've not collapsed it's not just because i'm wise there is something you must stand on There must have been something god told you or god told someone you are under or god connected you to there has to be something there are ministries who don't understand this they are anointed but they pay every bill by themselves they never experience help because they have not known how to tap into that advantage there are some of you you have never been helped by anybody you have not lacked but you don't know what it means to be assisted our lives are full of systems of advantage there was something on jesus that made simon of cyrene to be close by there was something in jesus that made joseph of arimathea to be willing to bury him in the virgin tomb look at me please i'm rounding up i know i'm taking your time we're rounding up now any earthly advantage in your life that seems to have gone there is a spiritual replacement for it listen let me comfort you that means whatever your father should be please i'm not getting you emotional if your father here if you've lost your father or you've lost your mother or you've lost any sibling or you've lost a destiny helper i'm bringing you a word of hope that every physical thing that they should do there is a remedy in the spirit if it does not happen to you it is because you do not know this dimension of god that means you are saying i'm an orphan apostle and the only child no father no mother there is something you can tap into the realm of the spirit that can be almost equal aside from the bodily connection of a father 
a mother are we together now there are some of you who lost your physical parents and God carried you and came and planted you in Koinonia here so that you can have the opportunity of receiving what is as real as I as fatherhood that means it is your responsibility to go back to God and say Lord because of my faith I left my loved ones now I am in Zaria all by myself I don't have an earthly father I don't have an earthly mother or I have a father mother some of you here please don't feel bad I am rounding up but I'm speaking by the spirit some of you here are single moms you have your children something happened maybe your husband died or ran away whatever the story is it doesn't matter and humanly speaking you are supposed to be disadvantaged but the Bible says for we know they don't know but we know that the kingdom can construct an advantage for you there are systems of advantage apostle I graduated with a third class or I never even had the opportunity to go to school in the first place and the truth is at my age knowledge is not a waste but sincerely at my age the responsibilities around my life may not allow me the privilege of a young person going to go to school again there is a system of advantage that you can tap into that will lift you and keep you where your contemporaries are as though you did not have any disadvantage this is the excellency of working with god So this is a word of hope. Don't sit down feeling bad just because your husband died or your wife died or your mother died. Most times we cry for two reasons. Number one, because of the earthly connection. Oh, how he loved him. That's what they said when Jesus wept at the grave of Lazarus. But the second reason is because of the space and the vacuum that their absence creates. And I'm speaking to you as a man of God by the Spirit that there is an advantage in the kingdom that you can tap into you can outsource an advantage to correct the anomaly that the absence of these personalities have caused in your life let's pray father i have spoken to your people by the spirit you have moved in a dimension tonight with us that is most edifying especially for this season we honor you for your wisdom and how you walk in the midst of us we honor you for your speakings thank you for the impartations the deliverances the healings and everything you have done and are still doing my God I pray let this voice not be the voice of a man let let it be the voice of God. Let it be the voice of prophecy. Let it be the voice of destiny. In the name of Jesus. I have spoken your counsel according to the wisdom of your spirit. I ask that as your people listen to these teachings again and again. May they hear what they've not heard now. May they see what they've not seen. Personalize this teaching, oh God, when they are listening to the tapes and let it minister deeply to the fabric of their destiny let there be results from this teaching tonight and lord i decree and declare that you bless your people the book of revelation says blessed are ye for you hear these things it says blessed is he that hears and reads these things i pray that the ears that will hear this from now and even many many years and decades from now may those ears be blessed may those eyes be blessed in the name of Jesus Lord I thank you because in the days that come we will credit our the excellency of our work to some of these truths we have learned tonight we give you the praise we honor you and we thank you continue to make this place a place of revelation a place of balance a place of the spirit Someone pray, we give you Father, praise thank we you. give you honor for in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Mentos Mentor 
Lift your voice. Make sure you are praying. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Thank you, Jesus, for January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, now December. Thank you. You have done all things well. Are there grateful people in this place? Jesus, we bless you. For your mercy, for your grace, for your goodness. Thank you. Hallelujah. Father, we are gathered tonight to say thank you. We are gathered tonight to declare that we love you. We are gathered tonight to enthrone Jesus. For the things you have done, for the battles you have won, only you are worthy of our praise. We magnify your name. For the things you have done. For the battles you have won. Only you are worthy of our praise. We magnify time everyone for the things you have done for the battles you have won only you are worthy of our praise we magnify your name Jesus we declare that you are greatly to be praised we do not take for granted your mercy, your grace. We do not take for granted the testimonies, the transformation, salvation, revival. We do not take for granted your walkings in and through our lives this year. And Father, we have come as people deeply grateful. We honor you. We recognize your grace and your mercy and your majesty. Let the name of the Lord be glorified from the rising of the sun even to the going down of the same we declare let the nations praise you and we join the people so god to praise you and to declare that forever you are god you have done all things well and to jesus be all the praise amen and amen please walk to two or three people celebrate them from the depth of your heart tell them something nice Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Mena yi da kasoni aka. Mena yi. Are there grateful people? Mena yi da kasoni aka. Abne ya fi godia. Celebrate Jesus. 
Jesus and please be seated. Hallelujah. Amen. Um, Psalm 50 verse 5, the last function before we get to the word tonight. The Bible says, gather unto me my saints, they that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Now, it's a culture in this ministry that um, at the closing of the meeting, we provide an opportunity and we challenge people um, to sow with understanding into the ministry. Uh, there's always an end of year sacrifice, not necessarily today, all through within the time of the break, as God would lay it in the hands of people. We believe in giving, but we believe in giving that is done from a standpoint of love, non-manipulative giving. And um, the Bible allows believers to be part of kingdom advance. And so this is, is very, very important. Um, so we'll give this opportunity again, um, not necessarily today, but all through within the time of the break into January. It's our culture as a ministry. We call on all who have been blessed and um, lifted and changed, transformed through this ministry to be part of this as God grants them the grace. Um, all sacrifices and all seeds um, will be collected in our central account. There's no proxy. There's no giving to people. I'm saying this in advance because usually when announcements are made like this, you will have all these funny people begin to arise. Um, the accounts should be displayed and will be displayed. And you can have it down. And as God grants you the grace, you can sit as a family, as individuals, and trust God to just minister to you what you will give. Now, this is very important. Please listen very carefully. Um, the end of year sacrifice seeks to do three things. Number one, it is, it is your expression of thanksgiving. It's a sacrifice of thanksgiving in recognition um, of all the things that God has done in our lives. God has been merciful. Many of us have received all kinds of breakthroughs. And so we come with that seed of sacrifice. Number two, um, it is part of your commitment towards kingdom advance. I believe that believers have a responsibility to stand to see that the purposes of God be advanced. There is no magic about what happens to the resources that believers give. It adds to the overall resources that are used for kingdom advance. And so it's always an opportunity for believers to sow knowing that for every soul that is saved, life transformed, and every contribution towards kingdom advance, it is recognized in heaven. Number three, it is a prophetic connection um, as a way of communicating your expectations to God. I believe that with all my heart. When you connect with understanding, you release your faith, believing God for that which you would do. Uh, let me tell you something. I have discovered that believers are not greedy, globally speaking. I used to think believers are greedy, but I don't believe that anymore. The problem usually is the integrity with the management of the resources of the kingdom. When people sow seeds, when they commit resources and you know people divert seeds that are meant for kingdom activities into personal um, you know personal gains and all of that this is usually where people are discouraged to give and all of that but I believe that people always give and will give when it is number one non manipulative non manipulative Giving from the standpoint of manipulation, I tell you, it's a waste of time because there is no reward for you. Praise the Lord. Giving under threat to give, otherwise this, it's, it's not, it's not, manip it's a manipulative kind of giving. There's no blessing. The Bible says, if there be first a willing heart, a willing mind. Are we together? So it is important by God's grace, where people of integrity, uh, even as a ministry, all of the blessings of God you see upon my life and upon our lives have come as products 
of a thorough understanding of the systems, the financial systems of the kingdom, alongside the grace to appropriate the keys that should be to make for the blessings of the Lord upon our lives. You can prosper with the dignity of kingdom integrity and, um, and with honor. And this is what you see. If there is anything at all that looks like the blessing of God upon our lives, it is credited to the intelligence of the ways of God that makes for that possibility. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So please, um, we are challenging and calling on everyone, businesses, individuals, our friends, partners, sons, daughters, ministries, um, all around the world who follow us sincerely as the Lord grants you grace, um, do well to support, do well to give. Please understand that what you are doing is not a donation. What you are doing is a connection with understanding. Um, you donate to a social welfare platform. This is a spiritual platform that brings real results when the principles are engaged with understanding. Are we together? Praise the Lord. Let's pray in advance for this end of year sacrifice. Lord, we thank you. It's an honor and a privilege to give. It's an honor and a privilege to sow. And we stand in agreement with the millions around the world who have been blessed lifted touched transformed saved healed in and through this ministry and lord we thank you for the opportunity you are providing for us to be part of kingdom advanced we are grateful for the participation of the saints and lord we pray that you who is the supervisor of your laws may you bless and reach everyone according to their needs in the name of jesus every seed that is sown in honor to this um this announcement i pray that it will return to the givers a thousandfold in the name of jesus may the lord bless everyone who is a faithful giver may the lord bless everyone who is a participant and a partner with what god is doing and may we all go from glory to glory in jesus name i pray are you ready for the word just a brief admonishment acts chapter 2 well thank you jesus acts chapter 2 we'll start from verse 36 the lord put this in my heart and tonight's teaching will really really bless you it's an admonishment but it will bless us acts chapter 2 from verse 36 this this is this is apostle peter um at the upper room now this is the first official salvation message after the holy ghost came therefore let all the house of israel please follow carefully know assuredly that god hath made the same jesus whom ye have crucified both lord and christ 37 now when they heard this they were pricked in their heart and said unto peter and the rest of the apostles men and brethren what shall we do peter is responding now 38 then peter said to them repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of jesus christ for the remission of your sins and ye shall receive the gift of the holy spirit 39 is where my message is coming from for the promise let's read together for the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off even as many as the lord our god shall call one more time uh-huh even as the lord this is a very interesting scripture because this is the first salvation message and peter is letting the body of believers then and prophetically everyone know that the promises of god this included is not for certain individuals he says the promise is unto you number two unto your children number three unto all those who are far off was talking about the gentile nation now then he says as many as our lord shall call 
very powerful very very powerful revelation the promise is for all not for few the promise not for men of god the promise not for americans not for british people not for africans this is a powerful revelation because until we understand that in christ there is a central platform that allows all and sundry access to the possibilities of the kingdom are we together now the proposition that makes it look as though there are individuals who have been isolated from the experience of the kingdom is a very dangerous communication the promise please keep that scripture for us is first for you everybody says for me then for your children and then to all that are far off even as many as the lord will call second scripture acts chapter 10 please we'll start from verse 34 to 35 i'm establishing first and foremost the centrality and the neutrality of god's operation when it has to do with the saints that there is an equal platform for the saints to be able to partake of the reality of the life and the power of the christ regardless of background regardless of sentiments that when we come to christ there is a level playing ground that allows any believer who is interested to be the partaker of the reality of the experience of the kingdom acts chapter 10 we we'll start from verse 34 now peter this was after the holy ghost fell upon the gentile nation are we still together say amen, amen. then peter opened his mouth and said of a truth i perceive that god is what no respecter of persons in other words there is no favoritism as it were with him next verse but in every nation africa hear this in every nation including africa in every nation including nigeria he that feareth him and walketh righteousness is accepted with him that means that every possibility in the kingdom is for the taking of all please understand this that in the economy of god there is no default preferences that attempts to victimize any individual not on spiritual grounds not on grounds of career not on grounds of maybe wealth and all of that there is no such thing with god the reality of the christ life puts a neutral ground for anyone to be able to become everything destined by god this is a revelation as we end the year it's 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 a reminder for some and it's a revelation for others two more scriptures romans chapter 10 and verse 12 romans chapter 10 and verse 12 the bible says apostle paul now is teaching for there is no difference between the jew and the greek for the same lord everyone please read with me the same lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him the same lord rich unto an american like he is unto an african rich unto the south as he is unto the north as he is unto the east are we together now i'm establishing the fact that everyone's destiny please listen to me in christ everyone's destiny in christ depends on their knowing god and they are activating the truths of the kingdom there is nobody who excels by default there is nobody who succeeds by default when it has to do with dealings the dealings of men with god there is a level praying ground for everyone the last scripture hebrews chapter 4 and verse 16. you know we come from all kinds of families and some of us have been indoctrinated by our sociological contexts into believing that we are disadvantaged listen to me very carefully you may never understand how destructive 
that understanding is that you sustain a thinking that there are people who never believe God can speak to them directly. There are people who never believe that they can know God on their own. There are people who never believe that they can experience the power of God and the grace of God. There are people who never believe they can prosper in this life. No. We have all kinds of subliminal communications that have come from our backgrounds that continue to plant dangerous perspectives. I've done a lot of teachings on mindsets and strongholds, and this is one of such teaching. He said, let us therefore come boldly. Everybody say boldly. boldly. Unto the throne of grace. Let us, not let some, everyone, come boldly to the throne of grace that we, as a corporate body, may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. The throne of grace is accessible by everyone and anyone in Christ. In fact, including sinners. So the Bible says, let us all come to that throne of grace. Are you getting what I'm saying now? These four scriptures show us the centrality and the neutrality of God's dealings with men. In God's economy, there are no superiors to others by default. Follow me closely. There are no favorites as it were. The same Lord is rich unto all. The Bible talks in the book of Jude, I think, of what he called the common salvation. Common salvation. There's no special blood that speaks for Joshua Selman or speaks for the, the, uh, what the, the president of any nation. No, it is the same blood that was shed for everyone. Are we together now? Yes. There is no individual who can rise to the fullness of the potentials in Christ when you believe that there is a sense of inferiority in fact this is Kenyon's definition of righteousness he defines it as the ability to stand in the father's presence without a sense of guilt inferiority and then condemnation the key word there is inferiority that when i stand before god and you stand before god based on that which has been provided for by the christ we stand from the same platform please believe this now it is true that culturally speaking if you are born by a millionaire you are not necessarily the same sociologically speaking with someone who was born somewhere in the village are we together there is an economic advantage if you are born in a nation where the government for instance is more strategic in nation building you already have an environment there are nations today when you are born in you will only need a few visas for the rest of your life because of the advantage of that territory there are others when you are born in even your neighboring country you will need your passport stamps to just cross over because of the socio-economic disadvantage that comes with those territories are we together in Christ the same Lord is rich unto all so when I stand and I see God doing mighty things with Benny Hinn, when I stand and I see God doing mighty things with the millionaires and billionaires when I stand and I see God doing great things with men of God I am inspired but not inspired to the point where you will now rate yourself as second class are you understanding what I'm saying listen to me on every champion and every world changer has found a way of indoctrinating themselves not arrogantly so but truthfully so into an understanding that i stand in a platform through christ that opens me up to any advantage possible on earth do you know what it means to be a child of god being a child of god is the most superior most superior honor that any man can get on earth the second honor you can get on earth is to be the son of a monarch or to be a monarch the third will be to be an ambassador or a politician at the highest level there, there are cadres of honor the highest of them is to be called a child of god behold what manner of love 
the father had bestowed upon us in that we are called us you know we just say it carelessly i'm a child of god donald trump's son needs only few assignments in his life are we together now because a major part of it has been solved look at this our lovely children that we just dedicated the truth is that there are some struggles they will not have in their life again till jesus comes remember we are the bridge between the old and the new we have been that sacrifice that have you know labored for people i'm a child of god it's a powerful revelation the monarch of the universe is my father let that revelation touch you when you say god is my father many people are used to abusing the name god for some people god is a bottle of minerals for some people god is an idol with a stone so when you say god is my father it doesn't carry the weight i'm no longer slave to fear i am a child I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child. So you may come from a background that has no advantage. It is true that your earthly father may not be able to help you. It is true that your heavenly, your earthly mother, or whatever it is, the disadvantage, but the consciousness that the monarch of the universe has decided to become my father and i am his child is a revelation that you must have it instantly gives you a sense of superiority not from a negative standpoint are you getting what i'm saying now yes but you move around knowing that the earth is your estate when I travel to any region, I expect the same thing to happen, regardless of location, because I am still within the domain of my father. Now, when you travel to other parts of the world, you will do left-hand driving, others right-hand driving. When you pass through other places in the world, because of the system of government, sociologically speaking, you are mandated to do certain things. But the awareness that the earth is the Lord's, that means in reality there is no disadvantage because wherever you are located and situated within this territory it is the domain of this monarch called god are we together now very powerful so the bible says that we come boldly this is the first thing i want to establish the promises of god not just the promise of the holy spirit the promises of god that are written in scripture the promises to prosper the promises to heal the promises to lift the promises to bless listen the promise of influence like god spoke to us genesis 17 and verse 6 i will make you exceeding fruitful he said and that kings will come out of your loins nations will come out of you it's not necessarily is it was to abraham but galatians 3 29 says if ye be christ's then are ye abraham's seed and heirs are according to the promise everybody is a spiritual jew in christ and that reality has brought us to a point where there is no disadvantage i pray that god will help you understand what i've said it is not our background no it is not our sociological context it is an understanding of the neutrality the centrality so understand this tonight even as we prepare to live and travel to different regions there is nobody called by god to a life of failure bishop oedeko said every calling in christ is a high calling everybody say a high calling yes there are no low callings in christ nobody is called to a life of failure mediocrity defeat no we are called to a life of excellence we are called to a life of grace we are called to a life of influence we are called to a life where the bible says that through the church the manifold many-sided wisdom of god will be displayed to principalities and powers if you're with me please say amen 
Now, but strangely so, and I want to pay attention now, the Bible seemed to be very open about individuals that God decided to carve out a name for. And I want to show you the secrets so that we can tap into this grace and into this possibility. The first is in Genesis chapter 18 from verse 17 to 19. God seems to talk to Abraham in a strange way. And the Bible records that Abraham was called the friend of God. Not many people in life are ever called the friend of God. We're reading from verse 17 down to 19. This will bless you. Look at me. He says, and the Lord said, look up please. Shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do? 18. Seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation and that and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him is a question 19 for i know him mm. that he will command his children and his household after him and they shall keep the way of the lord to do justice and judgment that the lord may bring upon abraham that which he had spoken of him abraham the friend of god it is true that there is a central ground in dealing with God, but it seems as though certain individuals were able to route certain pathways with God that now began to create a bias in God's dealings with them to make God himself now start giving them names. The name son of God, child of God is a generic name for everybody. It defines the centrality of God's love. But that certain individuals went a step further with God and they started earning for themselves titles that represented special attentions. Titles that represented certain covenants. So from that neutral standpoint, you can start growing yourself into specific possibilities with God. Are you getting what I'm teaching tonight? So for Abraham, he became the friend of God. And John chapter 15, please. 15 and 16. Very powerful scripture. John 15. He said, you have not chosen me. Look up. But I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit. He's talking about fruitfulness. And that your fruit should remain. And whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. Next verse. He says, these things... No, no. Go to verse 16. Oh dear, did I miss something? Yes, 15. Let's start from 15. 15 and then 16 and 17. Henceforth, that's what I'm looking for. I call you not servants. Now, it's not an insult to be called a servant of God. A servant of God is not a slave. A servant of God is one who has submitted himself to serve the purposes of God. I know sometimes we say servant, I'm not a servant. If you mean that contrasting sonship, you are right. But you will understand as you grow with God that the hallmark of sonship is servanthood. Are we together? So to be called a servant of God is not an insult. We are bond servants. Paul uses the word bond slaves, but not unto servitude in a negative way. Henceforth, I call you not servants, okay? For the servant, now look at this. This is, oh dear, oh dear. May God open our eyes to see in the name of Jesus. Notice, the proof of servant is ignorance of certain information, knowledge. It says, for a servant knoweth not what the Lord doeth. It says, but I have called you friends. What is the advantage of friendship? For all things that I have heard of my father, I have made known to you. The advantage of friendship with God is the privilege of access to spiritual knowledge. You know you are a friend of God to the degree to which he bends over backwards to open you up to the mysteries of the kingdom, the truths of the kingdom. The Bible calls them the secret things of God. This one is not for everybody. Is God helping us tonight? Abraham, my friend, shall I hide this from him? Shall I hide this from him? A servant does not know. He may obey religiously without knowing. 
but a friend is privy to information god is about to do certain things and he said no abraham is my friend this is powerful so god calls abraham his friend so i can know that i am growing just from sonship into friendship by god by the depth to which his fortitude to share the secrets of the kingdom and you know that dominion in this kingdom is a function of the secrets of the kingdom that we access it's called the hidden wisdom of god by me kings reign and princes decree justice with me are riches wealth and honor yea durable riches and righteousness they that love me and seek me early will find me acts chapter 13 we're still building on this acts chapter 13 from verse 21 to 23 another man carves out a title for himself although at a level plain ground we are all children of god or we are all creations of god we now see another man who went out of his way and afterwards peter is speaking now they desired a king and god gave unto them saul the son of kish a man of the tribe of benjamin by the space of 40 years next verse and when he had removed him he raised up unto them read with me david to be their king uh-huh to whom also he gave testimony stop who testified god god is about to give a testimony that i have found david the son of jesse help me a man after my own heart what qualifies him to be a man after my own heart his insistence to see that my will is always fulfilled now notice how these people end their titles most times we just know their titles but i'm showing you what they did how they went far when it has to do with the friend of god he's saying you have done something to me that forbids me from hiding things from you i give you access to knowledge as proof of friendship when it now has to do with a man after his heart he's saying i have discerned that this man will die doing my will and i have given him i've given him a title of a man after my own heart god is testifying not a prophet a man who pursues my heart not who pursues the throne don't forget the man is a king and yet god does not talk about his throne he will abandon his throne to seek the heart of god and god says this man is a man after my heart why because of his insistence to see that my will is being done next verse of this man's seed have God of this man's seed that God according to his promise raised up unto Israel a savior Jesus this is his reward for being a man after God's heart God insisted that your seed must participate in the lineage that will bring David was not the only man after the order of you know God and all of that but he is he is called the seed of David thou son of david not thou son of rahab not thou son of boaz not thou son of naomi they all played their roles but out of those people god selected one man to become to personify his passion towards a man are you learning something tonight a man after my heart a friend of god this is a very powerful revelation now let me share with you something very very powerful um and, and and this is where i think and i believe that many believers are not properly mentored and as we go on break it's important to remind and re-emphasize this that in the dealings of god man will always have a role to play in actualizing prophecy please listen carefully that the systems of god work twofold one the dimensions that are finished from god's standpoint and then number two through the experience of alignment and obedience we make manifest that which has been finished in our lives philippians chapter 2 and verse 12 
Philippians chapter 2 and verse 12. It says, Wherefore, Paul is admonishing the church in Philippi, Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. Hear what he says. Walk out your own, not your neighbor, not your child, not your wife, not your husband. Walk out your own salvation and give it a level of diligence with fear and trembling. Walk out your own prosperity. Walk out your own intimacy with the Holy Spirit. Walk out your own, ensure that you press into God so much that he's forced to find a name for you. He calls Abraham a friend of God. He calls Jacob the one, he names it after a generation of intimacy. And he's saying, listen, you have a responsibility to press until, until you give him no rest, the Bible says, until he establishes Jerusalem. There is a way you can wear God out, if I can use that word, through your passion and your intimacy intimacy he will brand his relationship with you and give it a name that defines his unique attention towards you work out your own salvation you will read about prosperity and never enter into it you may read about divine health and never enter into it now listen because this is a serious problem with africa the awareness of things like the finished work of christ which is true has when not properly balanced has provided a platform for a lot of irresponsibilities in believers and the ability to sustain the fortitude to press as an act of faith it's not there so we have people who just sit down and want everybody pray for me be wealthy for me be prosperous for me and that fortitude that participatory effort is not there are we together now so many people want to know the Holy Spirit and they think the key to knowing the Holy Spirit is to receive an impartation from a man who knows the Holy Spirit. What you are going to receive from that impartation is a ladder, a ladder that you will climb. Hello? A ladder that you what? Climb. You will climb it through your prayer. You will climb it through your relationship. You will climb it through the sacrifice of the instructions God will give you. That is not for everybody, it's for only you. You are about to eat and God says, turn the plate upside down. You are fasting for one week. He said, God, is it for everybody? He said, no, it's for only you. He said, God, why me? I mean, scripture. He says, I thought you want a name. A name that defines the extent of my intimacy with you. This is the pathway that leads to such a possibility. Now, there are rewards when you contend that much. Because you will, I mean, in physically now, we have what we call regular treatment of guests, whether in hotels, airports, whatever. We have what is called priority treatment. Now, the Nigerian government does not allow favoritism. But the various sacrifices of people have forced to have a lounge, a business lounge, a general place where people sit down. All those things are not favoritism. They are a way of rewarding the contribution of those people to nation building. So in as much as there is a level playing ground, there is something you and God can do that makes it unfair fair for God to generalize his dealings with you that from that time is a covenant you create that makes it impossible for God to deal with you the way he deals with everyone this is true it's a very powerful mystery that I show you work out your own salvation Thou shalt remember the Lord thy God. It is he that gives you the power to get well. A lot of believers start jumping. In the name of Jesus, I will never be poor. You are getting poor. You are seeing it. God is, your poverty is a report card. God is telling you, you are missing something. I will never be poor. I'm not being sarcastic. And you find out that a lot of people, and then here and there, we just browse through the laws. Okay, what and what should I know? Okay, tithing, giving, I should do business, I should do this. And then you just do one or two things and find out that nothing changes. And at a point, you just say, Kai, this Nigeria yourself man must work and you know all of this we find obvious excuses and then things never change but there are people who will will you will see them burn the candle in the days of my youth 
when the secrets of the Lord was upon my tabernacle when his light shined upon my head there is a light that shines upon your head there is the one that shines upon your feet the one that shines upon your head gives you illumination it says there is a spirit in man if you only have the light that shines on your feet you will keep walking but let me tell you the truth you will need the one that grants you access to knowledge are, are you getting what I'm teaching you now yes hmm. work out your own salvation any ministry that grows is worked at you know a lot of people sometimes respectfully people see me and say wow apostle God is doing mighty things in your life and I say yes he is and I, I really thank him and they, ah you are anointed though and you know sometimes I'm tempted to say I, I hear you are carrying the anointing of the generals and I'm tempted to say are they my relatives how did that happen you see this, this is the question we need to ask our god has favored you god has favored koinonia my brothers and my sisters behind everything that works is somebody working it working it with diligence working it with passion working it with zest behind every business that works it is favor every house is built by some man but god is still the builder it's a mystery this issue of being a worker this language work believers don't like it the men the moment you mention work people don't ah, why must i work oh dear Genesis chapter 2 after God creates man and woman he now comes to take clay God the creator who speaks and creates used his hand not his mouth alone when you read chapter 1 alone you are deceived because that's where he spoke and created it in the realm of the spirit you must go to chapter 2 and see God the walker not just God the speaker it takes more than speaking to build a destiny your hands must be soiled you will put your hands down and make it happen there are people around just looking for impartation looking for cheap prophecy and there is a place for those things but it is only activated whilst you walk whilst you walk hallelujah many people are going to remain poor it's not it's not a negative prophecy and my heart pains me while i say this many people are going to remain mediocre in their life many people may never sustain the level of influence and grace that it takes to birth the purposes of god generationally and it is not necessarily because god decided to use others it is your individual commitment elisha was never supposed to be a prophet elisha was a farmer but he followed Elijah and said I don't care what you are going to do with me oh I must carry so they were already sons of the prophet the next prophet should come out of them but someone said I need I, I, I can't die farming I started farming but I will follow you until something comes upon my life we define our realities by the unashamedness to pursue the keys of the kingdom until something comes from heaven to your life I will never be the same. I've touched your grace. My life will change. I will never be the same. I've touched your grace. My life will change. I will never be the same. I've touched your grace. My life. I, 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 finances with fear and trembling man of god sit down work out your ministry work out your sermons don't just wait for an impartation that will teach you verses open your bible mark them write them down when others are sleeping wake up there is the labor dimension of greatness no impartation will replace it 
You don't sit down and casually fast yourself the way you like into uncommon anointings. You are joking. You pray once in a while, when you want, one hour per year, two hours per year. No. Buy the books. Read your way to excellence. Use your diligence to create a space for yourself in destiny. My life will change. Eh? My life must change. My life will change. Eh? My life will change. I will never be the same. I've touched his grace. My life must change. I will never. chapter 2 we we'll read from verse 4 down to 10 the verse of emphasis is verse 10 please listen my brothers and my sisters this is a message to the body of Christ we must be careful we are missing a very major key the dimension of spiritual diligence it cannot be bought there are certain wells you must dig by yourself Africa likes prophecy. We like impartation. We like to receive. But there are wells that must be dug. There are, there are fountains that must be broken. It's a sacrifice. The price is death. Are we together? Go to verse 8. Go to verse 8. Second Peter 1 For if these things be in you, look at this now, and abound, they make that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. 9 But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. 10 Wherefore the rather, he says, Brethren, give diligence to make your calling and your election sure. It is true you are called, but prove it. It is true you are called, but give the level of diligence that makes your calling and your election sure. It is true you are a prophet, but prove it. It is true you are an apostle, but prove it. It is true that God has raised you to be a voice, but obtain grace to prove it. Give diligence. Diligence. Diligence in prayer. Diligence in the study of the word. Diligence in the sacrifice of compliance. Listen, let me tell you. Real success is not at a platter of gold at any level. Whether it is spiritual success, whether it is financial success, whether it is grace and influence. It is a sacrifice of continual press. As your insistence is what makes life open the gate for you. Is God speaking to us? This is where men are separated from boys. This is where what provides the disparity in ministry. This is what provides the disparity in business. This is what provides the disparity in the advantages that we command in our lives. I've had the privilege and the opportunity to talk with a few very great people and I am amazed at the silent sacrifices of these things these people when you see a wealthy man all you see is the affluence and you see the money until you find out the sacrifices that go on when you see a man of god you may just see the miracles and the signs and the wonders until you see the sacrifices that go on when you see a great person even politicians it's amazing that those people don't sleep two o'clock three a.m they are organizing meetings 
There are men of God who organize vigils. They sleep by five, six, and by eight, they are awake to attend to programs. Whoever told you that this thing just comes easy is a sacrifice. It says to be diligent. Someone will have to obtain that grace today. Wishing and hoping and believing that just laying on of hands and all of that, people are lucky. No. There are many platforms of advantage like prophetic connections like all of these kinds of things but none of them will replace the track record of sustained diligence hallelujah diligence this is what i've learned in my life as i have studied different people in ministry and then other platforms of life i have tried to look for what is the 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 impediment what is the one factor that seems to cancel out every effort because people do things but i found out that most people are not diligent most people are hopeful most people are prayerful most people are very futuristic but the ability to stamp your feet and say i will walk this thing in the name of jesus until it works ministry must work doors must open by the price of diligence the labor dimension jesus said my father walked hitherto i walk my father walks and i walk to the point that even seated at the right hand of the father he's still engaged making intercession for the saints many african nations respectfully speaking we have missed on the price of diligence spiritual diligence socioeconomic diligence the diligence of mentorship the diligence of the sacrifice of breaking these grounds until the fountains open can i be honest with you and submit to you next year will come and go year after next will come and go another year will come and go a decade will come and go your lifetime will come and go until you draw yourself and say look i am ready to walk this thing thank god for prophetic words they are not a lie but they only work for those who walk prophetic word does not work for those who hear it works for those who walk diligent Is God speaking to us tonight? Now, let me share with you one key to add to your diligence or so, and then we'll just rush to pray. I have found out. Now, I don't claim to have known God for too long, but I have enjoyed a little bit of his presence. And let me tell you something I found out with God. The single look up the single most important factor that governs the dealing of god with a man is the state of your heart the purity and the truthfulness of the state of your heart is the master key to walking with god write it down There are many systems that continue to build men in the kingdom. But listen to me, my brothers and my sisters. There is nothing of God and of worth that will ever happen to a man, a people, a nation whose hearts are not pure towards God and whose hearts are not true towards God. The motivation and the motif of your heart vetoes your prayer life vetoes your fasting vetoes your obedience no matter what you do with god you are not ready to start with god until he is able to x-ray your heart the purity and the sincerity of your heart is the foundational platform of doing business with god you have to understand this there are many believers that ignore this and we do a lot of other things we do business we fast we pray we do ministry but i have discovered in my work with god and from scripture that god is obsessed with knowing the truthfulness of the state of the heart of a man and i've preached many messages along this line please get them and listen to them see the great in this kingdom 
are not necessarily the most diligent the great in this kingdom are not necessarily as it were the closest people with god but there is something i know about god the purity of a man's heart is a force that magnetizes all of god to you the state of your heart why do you want to prosper why do you want anointing why do you want to be a president why do you want to be a governor why do you want to be a man of god why do you want to be a business mogul do you know for many believers this is where the real corruption lies that the motive and the motivation intrinsically is not right I know several men of God who will do anything within scripture to get power. They have the stamina to fast for as long. They have the stamina to pray. But the truth is that intrinsically, God has not found a space for himself in their motif. If there is one secret about my life, I tell you this, and I say it before God and I say it before you. If there is one secret, it is that if I prefer that I go to be with the Lord, if God cannot find a space for himself in my heart and in my motive. It's not just about anointing. Listen, it's not just about prosperity and influence. You know, many times when I travel and people are receiving me and the honor, the whole paraphernalia of honor and everything, and I see people admiring, and I just nod my head. I say, oh dear, oh dear. May God have mercy and grant us grace to reorient our understanding. Because this is some of these flamboyant things when we see we are, we are caught up and we go and say, no, me too. I must be rich. I must be blessed. And we start fasting already your motif has cancelled everything and I if I be lifted up from the earth I will draw all men I will draw all men I want to marry why I want children why I want increase in ministry why listen it is not a difficult thing for God to step in and help men it is within God's power to lift men riches and honor come from him the influence and the power and the grace comes from him the problem is the state of our hearts the greatest prayer therefore is not even intercession for souls the greatest prayer is not binding witches and wizards the greatest prayer is not deliverance from enemies the greatest prayer is the prayer that turns your heart into a throne the throne where he can be seated the prayer that can turn your heart into a throne is a prayer god cannot ignore please koinonia listen to me these are my final words to us as we prepare to wrap up the year there are people who God loves them as savior to all but doing the business of destiny it has not started until that death happens so sometimes when people come and say apostle I want an impartation I want grace with all it's a privilege to be able to do the things that we do for the kingdom but I know that I'm wasting my time I've read books on wealth and prosperity. I've read books on church growth. I've read books on influence, territorial dominion. At a point in time, I had to appreciate the books, but I closed them. I said, Lord, there must be a secret. And that's when he told me that the price for all of me is all of you. The price for all of me is not all of your brain. The price for all of me is not all of your singing. The price for all of me is not all of your worship. The price for all of me is all of you. Is God speaking to us? All of you. All of you. All of you. Now, let me tell you this. It is not unusual for a generation to not believe you. So don't think it is strange. My loved ones don't believe me. You are not the first. It is all right. A generation does not believe me. Nothing is believable till the results speak. Please understand this. But that price of death continues to be. And you see, the thing with death is you don't die once. It's Jesus that died once. The saints die every day. Hello? Jesus died once and for all because of the character of what he was doing. The atonement. You are not dying to atone. You are dying to yield. 
you are dying to align the death is part 24 hours the moment today is gone you start the death of tomorrow the moment tomorrow is gone you start the death for every dimension of death there is a corresponding glory the day you are tired god will not force you but he will show you that don't then ask for this dimension of glory when you are not willing to continue yeshua hamashiach komi nanakane yeshua hamashiach komi nanakane komi nanakane ya yesu Yeshua Hamashiach. One more time. find a dead vessel and you see the possibilities that can come out show me a man who has vowed to continue to die i show you a glory that excels show me a people that continue to die our generation does not like the language of death because every time we talk of death it spells inconvenience it spells discomfort it spells going out of it means that sometimes god will strip you of everything you it's a price for the glory no matter how much impartation is a price for the glory you are not just going to lay hands on the sick and say in Jesus name stand up I'm a member of koinonia you are right but let me tell you when it comes to the depth of the dealings of God generationally you will need to die generationally are you hearing what I'm saying now please listen very carefully there are people that God will give you instructions empty your account there are people God will tell you 80 percent of all your wealth for the next two years keep giving it you say Lord why he said because you said you want to be a kingdom financier because I said I thought I should have he says I want to give you a revelation of there is he that scattereth and yet increase it you are you know it as a memory verse but I'm leading you through a pathway that makes it an experience for you lord i want you to anoint me grant me the grace that speaks across territories and he says you really want that yes god let's go and you start the journey and for starters he says give everything you have in your life he said god i didn't hear you well give everything you have your reputation your wealth your everything your clothes your honor give it away that is the price is what he told the rich man he said go and sell everything you have follow me the man said no 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 jesus this one is so much authentic spiritual power does not just come by impartation alone it comes by death it comes by death lord i'm trusting god for the grace for illumination revelation but your mind is full of many things you must die to give it space and when there is space then the oil can come and the seeing eye can be given to you please listen to what i'm telling you remember my message the same Lord is rich unto all but by certain sacrifices men have ascended this ladder and they have given they have branded their dealings with God so that he has been forced through their sacrifices to no longer deal with them as he deals with men this is the hand of God and this is the way he works scattered across the body of Christ are different individuals different territories who have ascended different dimensions of ladders in the spirit and god has defined certain possibilities to them there are churches and ministries when you enter there you must prosper even before you finish learning all the laws at least you will prosper to a point where you will be surprised you will know that i have no part in this because you are now a partaker of a covenant god has vowed a vow by the sacrifices of certain people 
please listen to me brothers and sisters when you walk with god at a general level you will go to heaven but you will not do much these are not even the people satan is looking for satan will come and pass you you will call him he will still leave you he's looking for people there are people he's looking for desperately where are these ones that want to die where are these ones whose life is no longer their own where are these people who want to experience the anointing in another dimension where are these ones who want the power and the grace of god where are these ones who want the influence of nations there is nothing that can be done about a man who has chosen to die the last enemy to be destroyed is death and when a man has chosen to die it's over Boko Haram are a threat because of their willingness to die not to leave when you want to leave you are in trouble you are only free when you are ready to die I have been crucified with Christ nevertheless I live is a mystery and the life that I live in the flesh I live by the faith of the Son of God that whatever it will cost me to die I will die not for the sake of ministry not for the sake of money not for the sake of titles that prayer to search my heart Try my thoughts. It's a powerful prayer. It's a prayer you must pray for the rest of your life in this side of God's kingdom. The heart that cries for all of God, not more of God. All of God, not more of God. All of God. He will, he will come more and more. But the goal is for all of him to be transfused into you. The secret to ministry is not invitations. The secret to ministry is not a crowd. It's not a church. It's not eloquence and oratory. The secret to ministry is not even the loyalty of men to serve you. The secret is death. Genuine, continual death. I died yesterday. You are joking. You die daily. I died last week. No, sir. You die daily. You are dying today. You will die next week. A time will come when you truly will not have any life on your own. These are the ones that step their feet upon the soil of nations. And like the waters, it will pass hither and thither. And you are wondering, are these men gods? They are men. But death translated them into another dimension. Please hear me, my brothers and my sisters, more than Bible study, more than mentorship, more than fasting, more than prayer, more than training your skills, the real secret is to die. After 30 years as Christ tarries, I will still be preaching this thing I'm saying. If you don't die, you cannot live. The way to live is to die. To die to yourself. To die to your ego. To die to your desires. It's a journey. A journey that until the day you see his face, you don't stop. 
I die daily. It is the price for carrying the anointing. It is the price for carrying grace. You can die to a point where it does not make any difference whether God keeps his wealth in heaven or he keeps it in your account. You have so died is the same thing. Whether the money is in your account or is in heaven, in God's mind is the same. Because any day he makes a demand, it will go. A time will come where whether the anointing is in heaven or the anointing is on your life is the same. Because God has guaranteed that you will die seeing to it that his purposes be established. This that I share with you is the price. When this is settled... Then that's when every other thing makes sense. Your prayer life, your fasting, even your obedience to scripture. Believe me when I tell you all that is nonsense when you have not died. It's the reason why we will keep fasting. We will keep praying. We will keep quoting scripture. You see someone's car, you go and lie down on it and say, Oh God, please open my door. And you are right. It should bless you, but it will not bless you. Because you are speaking from a platform of a decadence of heart. Yes, you are. Listen, we give, we give breaks in the ministry, not just to allow us rest. It's been a busy year for everyone. But the goal is not just to rest and catch up. We're giving you one month so that it will help you die well. Die enough to carry the glory of 2020. Die enough to carry the power of 2020. Die enough to carry the voice and the mantle of 2020. That Lord, I am dead but not dead enough to carry the next glory. Dead but not dead enough to carry the mantle, the power. Dead but not dead enough to be trusted with kingdom influence. At that point, the one week. Now, you are not going to go to God as a worker. You are not going to God as Apostle Joshua Selman. You are not going to God as a leader. You are going to God as one who is desirous of his use. And now you can have the time to lock yourself. You can have the time to stay with God and stay till you die. While your flesh cries, you say, God, don't pity it. Forget about the tears of my flesh. Keep the death going. Just keep the death going. The death, your ego, say, forget about my ego. Keep the death going. Ah, my money, forget about the money. Keep the death going. Show me that man and I show you a man to fear in this life. A man that has mastered death. I die daily, Paul said. So he got to a point where he could say for me, oh, I don't know whether it is to go or to stay. I have conquered the interface of these limitations. But for your sake, I will stay. Let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, you've heard me say it again. There are virgin dimensions in the spirit. Compared to where God is taking us, we are only starting. And we must trust God for grace to not be complacent. The secret is to turn to God and sit down and die. The applauds of men can deceive. Men can clap you and stop you from entering tomorrow. This one thing I do, the Bible says, forgetting the things that are behind. You must train yourself to forget. Both success and failure can do the same thing. It can kill you. So you lay it aside and say, Lord, what is the price for the next level? And he says, death. And he says, come. Like a doctor about to perform a surgery on a patient, let it go. Let the ministration of that death continue. And you are staying with God. It will tell you for the next three days, let no food enter your mouth. There is a surgery spiritually. And even the slightest meal can interrupt it. And you say, Lord, ordinarily I will want to eat. But for the joy that is before me, let me endure the cross and even despise the shame. And in the midst of that pain, suddenly you will meet an anointing. You will meet a grace. And God will tell you this anointing is what I'm releasing on earth for the next 15 years. That means whoever does not have this type of anointing cannot be featured in my program. And now that you have died enough, here you go pick it up and you pick it and like like the pages of a book another dimension of you is open and whilst you think you have exhausted you will see another dimension they go from strength to strength this is my message 
not just to go and celebrate Christmas and up and down not just to go gisting and wasting our time listen times with God are times of death now is not the time to go and be clapping for yourself in the secret place it's foolishness great men are great because they forget their crowns great men are great because they forget their trophies great men are great because they forget their achievements create an immunity in your room that does not hear let you hear the the clappings of men while they are clapping you are dying the clap increases you are still dying and the flesh tells you have you not attained enough and the Spirit of God says you lie not for the mantle of a nation keep dying keep dying you will see the effulgence of the power of God in your life and men will look at you and say are you a human being or you are a spirit when you go back God will say can we continue you are back from the meeting you some of you will go home and God will give you instructions organize crusades organize little meetings and while you are doing all of those people will look at you and say at ah, this koinonia and while they are talking you want to come back to life and the spirit to say no not at this point keep dying the door to life is death the door to the throne is the cross the door to the cross then the grave you must die it is the one key i have learned in my life fear a man who dies don't fear a man who died now i beseech ye brethren by the mercies of God that ye offer your bodies a living sacrifice unto God which is your reasonable act of worship there are times that God does not want songs no there are times that God does not want prayer there are times God does not even want dancing around there are times God does not want reading any Bible there are times God just wants the sacrifice of death it will rise as an incense past the second heavens where demons are demons don't need your death they cannot do anything with your death it will pass them they can't cast it they can't kill it it passes straight to the throne and is received before the master and through that death the blood that comes from your death becomes your agreement the signature you sign with God for the next five years Lord I am still available Lord don't replace me with a stone Lord I am still there you have options but incorporate me in your program are you ready to pray number one Lord make me blind to anything that can make me alive in myself whether it's pride whether it is money whether it is the flesh deaden my eyes deaden my ears deaden my senses to the impulses that can distract my process of death lift your voice and pray Lift your voice and pray. Pray for yourself. Pray for yourself. Not Nigeria. Not your family. Not ministry. Pray for yourself. Not your neighbor. Not your brother. Not your sister. Pray for yourself. Shalabarata kateleba. Lord, let me die the death that brings glory. Let me die the death that brings power. Deaden my eyes. Deaden 
deaden my ears to the impulses of distractions, deaden my eyes, deaden my ears to the uploads of men, deaden my eyes, deaden my ears to the flattery of men, the deception of success. Bring me to a point where I am focused in death, dying daily, dying hourly. I give you a key one more time for those who did not hold it this year you should hold it before you go home that everything only makes sense when death is in place that everything only makes sense when the flesh dies that everything only makes sense die daily die daily die on monday die on tuesday die on wednesday die on thursday die on friday die on saturday die on tuesday it is not physical death it is death to the flesh stay on the journey obtain grace and stamina the stamina to continue the stamina to press until you press to strange dimensions of anointings strange dimensions of graces die until god swears a vow upon your life die until the character of the spirit is continually formed in you die until you are dead that all of you is replaced by all of him hallelujah hallelujah we are going to pray a very serious prayer. Oh God, purge my motives. Listen, purge my motivation. Why do I do the things that I do? Why do I preach? Why do I want money? Why do I want a wife? Why do I want a husband? Why do I want children? Why do I want influence? Why do I want my voice to be heard generationally? What is the intrinsic motivation? We are about to pray and let the light of God, the double-edged sword, penetrate dividing the soul and spirit and let it discern the thoughts and the intents of your heart. Don't be ashamed what you find there. Don't be embarrassed by it. That's what his presence is for. That's what the sword is for. But lift your voice. Purge my motive. Purge my motivation. The psalmist said, search my heart. Try my thoughts. And see if there's any evil way in me. Then he says, lead me to the way everlasting. Koinonia, pray in this final service. Shila baruto sodebash, eketa baruto soto pradish, randa baranta skabaru shaletos. Why do I want influence? Why do I want prosperity? Why do I want a voice? Why do I want the anointing? Why do I want the prophetic? Why do I want the healing grace? Why do I want access to the heart of a generation? Pray and cry before God. my pride pray break my ego pray break my reputation bring me to a point of nothingness where all that is in my heart is a desire to see you glorified a desire to see your purpose is established 
is someone praying few minutes and we are done but pray the purity the purity of my motivation the purity of my motive the purity of my desire lift your voice and pray this is a process that makes you become a friend of God this is a process that makes you become an icon for a generation and die purify my motives purify my motivation if you find any motivation that is not the revelation of the Christ if you find any motivation that is not the enthroning of your purposes Lord I allow you to kill it pray that prayer let it die and die again and again Listen, hallelujah. We're rounding up, but listen, let me tell you this. Happy is a man. See, you see, Ba, outside of this journey, we are not worth much. We are very small. It is the excellency of this journey that makes you heavy. That's where the word glory comes from. Kabod, doxa, the weightiness of God upon a man. The mighty God upon a man doing wonders. The treasure that comes from heaven to turn a man around so that your life becomes an effulgence. Pages of wonders. Ever increasing wonders. We're going to pray the last point and we're done. Father, the next dimension of my life and my destiny, whatever price it would take to step into it, I obtain grace. The Bible says we should obtain grace. This grace is obtained. It is not assumed. It is obtained. Lift your voice and begin to pray. The next dimension. The next dimension of my prosperity. What is the price, so God? The next dimension of ministry, what is the prize? The next dimension of influence, you are praying now, preparing for 2020. Is someone praying? Thank God for the 2019. Thank God for that which was done. But Lord, I set my face like a fling. Is someone praying tonight? What is the price for the anointing of 2020? What is the price for the influence of 2020? What is the price for the impact of 2020? What is the price for the speed of 2020? What is the price for the relevance of 2020? What will it take to be featured in your program? No assumptions. No assumptions. I obtain grace. I obtain grace. I obtain grace to be featured in your program. Come 2020. I obtain grace to remain relevant in the scheme of things. Come 2020. I remain. I obtain grace to remain your friend. To remain a man after your heart, grace to remain the voice. Please pray for yourself, pray for your family, pray for your church, pray for your ministry, pray for your business. Lord, what will it take to remain? What will it take to increase? What will it take to advance? What will it take?
Hallelujah. Let me give us one more prayer point. The Lord is just ministering one more prayer point. We are going to pray. Holy Spirit. You see, the revelation of the Holy Spirit is a mighty secret. Many people know his power, but they do not know his presence. Many people know how to use the anointing that comes from the Holy Ghost to prophesy, to pray for the sick. But the intimacy, Paul said the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the koinonia, the fellowship, the participation, the sharing together. Please, you have to use this break to know the Holy Spirit. Thank God for ministers who continue to pray. And based on the assignment he has given in life and in death, will continue to be faithful to it. But you must trust God for intimacy. Holy Spirit, who are you? You are not just a wind. Benny Hinn said you are his friend. Catherine Kuhlman said you are her friend. I can't lie that you are my friend. Reveal yourself to me. Not for the sake of ministry. Not for the sake of prophecy. 99% of our pursuit for the Holy Spirit is to get the gifts that come from him so that we will increase our sphere and then use it to be relevant nonsense you must shelve those things and say Holy Spirit show me who you are that Shekinah that presence that intimacy Jesus walked with you you turned him into a sign and a wonder spirit of the living God and for some of us we have to pray and say Holy Spirit from where I left off let continue the journey because it was not like this from where I left off let's continue the journey pick my hands again turn me into a sign and a wonder but much more than that turn me into a friend we are going to pray Holy Spirit manifest yourself reveal yourself to me lift your voice and pray Reveal yourself in the quietness of the night. Haven't purged my motif. Haven't purged my motivation. Help me seek you for who you are. Help me know you for who you are. Not for what you can do to my life. Not what you can bring to my table. Let my life never remain the same. We're wrapping up. Aside from those who are under the anointing and those who are kneeling down, if you can hold someone's hand, if there's somebody near you to hold a hand, let's just hold hands as a family of faith, connecting with those all around the world. We will never be the same We've touched your grace Our lives will change We can never be the same Not with your grace Our lives must change Our lives will change Our lives will change Our hearts must change Father, I stand in the presence of your people And everyone who is connected to this grace And connected to this ministry all over this nation all over the continent of Africa and all over the world we stand as a family in this last service and whilst thanking you for everything you have done in 2019 we decree and declare do not withhold administering the death that produces glory in us in the name of Jesus Lord, I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice and the millions connecting from different nations. Spirit of the living God, reveal yourself to us. Beyond religion, 
reveal yourself to us in the name of Jesus father I stand before your people and as a family of faith we cry the price for the relevance of 2020 the price for the revelations of 2020 the price for the signs the wonders the influence the price to end your trust for 2020 through the ministration of death we pray in the name of jesus may that price be fully paid in our lives i pray tonight and forever search our hearts oh god purify our motives and continue to overturn and overturn until everything you find in our hearts is christ christ enthroned christ glorified christ exalted christ revealed in the name of jesus christ father i decree and declare right now over everyone connected to this grace that in the name of jesus let this break be a break that is worth the while let it be full of moments of encounter and intimacy let it be full of moments of plannings and revelations may this break be the bridge between our now and our tomorrow in the name of jesus for all of you who will be traveling in the name of jesus i decree and declare whether by road whether by sea whether by air i speak over you by the god of heaven may your journeys be blessed may your going out and your coming in remain blessed in the name of Jesus, I send you from this place tonight like the foxes of Samson. That you will go in the spirit and the power of Elohim. May you go and wreak havoc to the kingdom of darkness. May you go and bring life, be dispensers of life in your homes. Return back to your localities as signs and wonders. And for as many of you who God will be giving instructions to do many things for the kingdom within the time of the break, the grace to be effective, let it be released. Everybody who will be on retreat, everybody should be. And everybody who will be on retreat, I pray for you, let there be an open heavens. Accurate delivery of the precepts for the next level of your life in the name of Jesus I decree and declare every challenge in your life now and every challenge in your family and every challenge in your locality by the power that raised Christ from the dead I declare that it leaves you now and forever anyone under the sound of my voice that the spirit of death is roaming around your life and around your family i stand by the god of heaven and i curse it now in jesus name i speak life to your destiny i speak life to your family i speak life to your body in the name of jesus christ I declare that nobody connected to this ministry will be a victim of kidnappers in the name of Jesus Christ and I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit may my God keep you from trouble he will only take you to the place of honor in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus finally before we round up let me pray over our finances a lot has happened in the nation and it is only responsible that I speak over our finances especially during the Yuletide season there are families that sadly can barely even afford something to eat 
it's not enough to be waiting for welfare for God to use somebody God can open the heavens there is an advantage that the prophetic provides even at times like this every time there was famine and financial squalor it was the prophetic that came to breach and I want to speak over our finances it matters that there are resources in our hands especially within this time there are some of us um, every one of our family members will be depending on us while we are depending on God and probably others so I need to speak into your life I pray for you in the name of Jesus <clears throat> between now and next week by the God of heaven let there be a manifestation of strange favor in the name of Jesus let very strange resources at a corporate level and as an individual level may these resources follow you every financial need that will arise the grace to solve it I release it upon you in the name of Jesus Christ and finally I pray for you that the love of God the bond of perfectness I've taught you that the hallmark of transformation is love not knowledge I pray for you from the depth of my heart the love of God that seals your character the love of God that seals all that you are I impart it upon you now in the name of Jesus Christ the Bible says by this shall all men know that we are your disciples when we have love one for another may the baptism a fresh dimension of love let it come upon you in the name of Jesus be extensions of that love to your loved ones be extensions of that love to your locality whatever it would take for you to show that love may the grace be released upon you in the name of Jesus Christ amen and amen now please everyone aside from those kneeling please keep standing I want to make the last altar call for the year the last altar call for the year there are people here let's minimize movements please there are people inside outside overflow one two three you are saying apostle while I listen to you I just felt the need to make it right with Jesus and to make it now before the year is over wherever you are or you are saying apostle I want to rededicate my life to Jesus please wherever you are we have just two minutes for you I want you to leave your seat aside from those in overflow three overflow three you can just move to your projector stand but you are here I want you to run boldly come and stand here very quickly let's celebrate them as they come you're coming from outside please double up very very quickly God bless you koinonia is this the best you can do keep coming God bless you keep coming God bless you keep coming If there are still people coming from outside, please double up, double up very quickly. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, please look at me for a moment. Those of you in front, I salute you for making this great and bold decision. Um, some of you are crying. Don't be ashamed of your tears. We are before Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. I want to lead you into this prayer. And I want you to mean it from the depth of your heart. Don't recite this as a poem. Let it be true from your heart. Lift your right hand. You're joining them. Please come quickly. Please say after me passionately and say it truly. Say, Lord Jesus, I love you. And I believe that you are the son of God. Tonight, I ask Jesus to come into my heart, to be my Lord, to be my Savior. To be my king I declare by the authority of scripture that I receive eternal life I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness and I reign in life the power of sin the power of Satan the power of the flesh is broken in my life now and forever I am a child of God I reign forever 
Amen. Lord Jesus, I thank you for these ones. They have come as touching your grace and your call. The Bible says, and whosoever will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. My God and my King, I pray and I cry that you will bless them. I pray that you will keep them in the name of Jesus. May they know your presence. May they know your power. Holy Spirit, I commend them to your ministry. I pray that you will turn them into signs and turn them into wonders. May the Lord bless you. You move forward ever and backward never. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. God bless you and thank you again for this decision. Please look at me, all of you. Uh, I want you to just follow these gentlemen waving their hands, all of you in concert. Just follow them and they will lead you to a group of people who will attend to them. Let's celebrate them, everyone. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We believe you are mightily blessed. To connect with the ministry and get more from Apostle Joshua Selman, follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Koinonia ENI. To stream Koinonia Live, go to mixler.com forward slash Koinonia and download the teachings on koinoniasermons.org. For questions and inquiries, call 0814-721-4444 or 0907 777 We love and